All right, guys, this is your mentor, Dr. Sherry. I'm going to start the today's session. And our today's so uh, session is going to be on a uh, mixed topic. So this is like, you know, name as a, you know, uh, trauma and, you know, emergency. All right. I hope you can see my screen. Yeah, I hope that is a yes. All right. So this is a very first class. We're going to take as a trial class, actually. And some doctor asked me, you know, when I will upload the recording, I'll upload that, you know, within 24 hours. I mean, you are attending the class same time. Next day, around the same time, we'll be posting the recording, okay? But as a first class, I'll try to be a little bit more early, All right? And I hope so my voice is loud and clear. In the beginning, actually, we started taking the recording, as you can see, so um, won't be a problem now, actually. I mean, and uh, yeah, sometimes some countries, you know, there's electricity issues. So here is a little tip for that. Um, what you can use a little, keep a little mobile data so that, you know, anytime if anything happens, you can enter directly with mobile as well, actually. Okay. But normally you try to attend with a laptop device. That'll be good, actually. But also keep at least like a small mobile data, like, you know, if any emergency came up so that you can enter. Why are we encouraging the live classes always? Because see, live class, you can always finish in, in like, say, if it's a two and a half hour live class or the three hour live class, you can always finish in, in time. But can we finish a recording in three hour? A, a quick question. The answer is a no. And a whole day goes in a waste, right? So this is another thing. So we'll talk a lot of things about the strategies, planning, and things that is coming up in coming days. But in the beginning, a very basic thing, you know, which I always follow, that is something, you know, five hours a day, five days a week, the week for five months, because our course is five months. So this is, you know, something, you know, to encourage you actually, I mean, at least minimum, you know, every day, like, you know, it has to be five hours. And you can see not every day we're asking. So in generally, you know, weekly, you know, 15 hours. Now, if in one particular week, it is the minimum, guys. In one particular week, if you can't finish the 25 hours, make sure, you know, you cover up that thing in the next week, actually. Guys, it can vary with person to person. If you're coming up after a long gap, you may need to study on one hour more. If you're a fresh intern, maybe four and a half hours is enough for you in some cases. Okay, so these are small, some, you know, tips um, about the classes. Those of you just now joined, you know, we are going to take a session and the session would be on the surgery and the trauma. ENT will be taking a little later actually, okay? And class routine uh, will be giving tomorrow actually. You know, my laptop has some issues so I couldn't get the time to sit with my team. So routine, you know, I'll drop tomorrow in our group actually. So no worries on that one. With that note, let's go and, you know, see the session, you know, how the session looks like. I just try to bring some colorful background with some little, you know, waving animation that is going on. Uh, I hope so you will enjoy and, you know, a little bit more, you know, advanced, you know, text and the things. Hopefully you will enjoy. All right. I just switched the screen. I hope so. Okay. Four years later. I can tell you one thing. The highest I found, you know, a doctor was 53 years. So you can imagine after how many years, you know, she started and, uh, you know, her conversation was like that, that uh, doctor, you know, my uh, kid even got married. So now I'm free. I'm planning to start, you know, so how many after years are you starting? So she said, like, I guess almost after 20, 22 years. Uh, I'm telling it because that doctor even passed the exam, actually, you know, with flying colors in single go. Okay, she studied like, you know, almost like eight months. So, you know, if she can do that, definitely you guys are even much more talented. So don't think about that, you know, four years, you know, someone started starting after 22 years. Okay, so this is like, you know, so with that note, I mean, those people are thinking that I have three year, four year or five year. I'm sure this is, you know, something and, you know, someone finished, nailed it, applied for job, also got a job. Uh, it's doable actually, guys. All right, with that note, let's go and start the session. I took off my video, I mean, so that you can see the screen more clearly. Okay, we're starting this one, surgery and trauma. Uh, ENT will take some other time, don't worry. All right, great. So, uh, 
So for some general surgery, there's some a little bit, you know, words about general surgery, actually. So you will get to see a lot of, you know, um, clinical virginity and related questions regarding the surgery and the trauma. Okay, this is the main thing to say, like a lot of scenarios will be given. For so example, I mean, in generally, let me tell you two, three words. For example, say a bee string come and bite you, what will happen? Someone has opioid overdose, what we, we will ne need to do next? Then, um, you know, how to give the adrenaline, you know, um, then there will be things like a few things related to fluid, actually. Okay, it's like when surgery will start officially, we'll talk more about fluid. We'll talk more about the electrolytes. We'll talk more about the shock features and management of various type of shocks. We'll talk about uh, transplantation, all right, and some cases rejection. So there's a lot of interesting thing included regarding this thing, surgery, Latin, trauma related thing. Anyway, so you'll find a lot of clinical virginity. So in the beginning, normally, you know, to encourage our community and the things, let's, you know, uh, start with a, you know, are you ready guys, you know, response with a yes, so that, you know, we can you know, start one more time because some people join later. So everyone please respond so that, you know, we understand you can also comment in the chat box. So well done, you know, if you can comment that actually. Great. Ready? Yes. Well done. I mean, it's good to have a yes in the very first day. All right. Great. Uh, some slides have copyright issues. Just be careful, you know, if you take any screenshot, uh, make sure you don't share in, you know, any WhatsApp or Telegram. Go, you may got copyright strike in that case. Okay. First thing that is coming up is the airway, right? You know, whenever we go any places or patient is coming to us, the first thing we look into or a road traffic accident is happening and paramedics are going to the accident area. You know, both can be scenario. The first thing that come up is the airway, right? Now, among the airway, you know, what is more important actually? You know, very first thing you need to see, you know, whether the patient is conscious and whether the patient is speaking, and I mean, or not actually. This is very important actually, because in terms of, uh, if the patient is total unconscious and the thing, there is a certain parameter we also do that is called the GCS, right? So that is also very, very important. Now, this brings us to a quick question that, you know, what GCS do you think is, uh, say GCS, we're talking about Glasgow Coma Scale, what GCS do you think is re related to intubation? Example, if you see the GCS, like, you know, I valval motor you know uh, like you, how much below do you think so eight or you know below eight you know if you find that one eight or below eight if you find that one you will consider situation is grave situation is bad so probably we need intubation so even in the accident side you can assess that one even paramedics can assess Glasgow coma skill and you know if needed you know, they will go for intubation or not. That's that's one of the reason, you know, it is mentioned like conscious or speaking because, you know, by the Glasgow Coma Scale, you know, we can assess actually and we can ask them, you know, what happened? What, do you know where are you? I mean, this kind of things actually. I mean, and also if brain function is intact or not, you know, so these are important questions actually. So securing the airway is very, very important. Securing airway is also important to save the spinal cord. Now, there is a, some word that comes out like, you know, ABC, this is the very first thing. ABC is normally the very first thing. So in an accident site, sometimes we use short words, RTA. RTA means what? Road traffic accident. So in a road traffic accident, what do you think? What we do first? I'd like to give, you know, um, ABC or like, you know, start the IV fluid first. Or I would like to, you know, secure the neck first. Secure neck now there's two options so you will be sometimes they'll try to play with you with the words they'll try to play with you with the words normally i know we read about abc first always abc first but they will play with some words and you know you have to understand this you know the uniqueness or severity so in an accident side it's always important to secure the neck first it will take just you know maybe five seconds you know but, you know, otherwise, you know, there could be more massive damage to the spinal cord. So you have to be careful on that one that, you know, make sure there's no injury to spinal cord. This is how a lot of question being tricked, actually. You know, you read as a IV fluid or airway, but, you know, it come up as a securing the neck, actually. I hope that is clear. We're moving to the next slide. 
So also in that, you know, accident site or patient is brought to the emergency room and you find your patient cannot breathe properly. Okay. I'll go, go to that slide again. You find your patient, you know, is cannot breathe properly. All right. Patient cannot breathe properly. Patient is exhausting. Breathlessness is happening. Now you try to intubate, but it is not happening. You tried with more smaller size intubation set. It doesn't work. This I'm giving a very classic scenario. Now, what to do in that case? You are trying intubation, you are failing. Now, what to do next? Okay. I'll give you two options. Uh, Crico thyroidomy. Ask nearest senior. I'll give you two options, guys. Please check these two options. Sometimes, you know, uh, relevant and interesting question comes first. Let's see. I'll go for answer of this one. I'll be asking the immediate next supervisor or senior who is, you know, standing next to me. You understand, guys? Because, you know, some cases, you know, probably I might fail doing that procedure. Yes, normally the answer is crico thyroidectomy. But if a senior in that emergency room, ER means you can imagine, you know, there's a big ER. Your procedure may not be the best, but, you know, some of your seniors procedure or some maybe an anesthesiologist is, you know, standing nearby. I'm not talking like, you know, call an anesthesiologist from a, operation theater. I'm talking about the immediate next person who is standing near to you. So this is the like some of the tricky things, you know, a bit ethical questions, I would say, a bit ethics related. So this kind of tricky scenarios you'd get to see in that, you know, exam very often. Is it clear, everyone? I'll ask the senior and, you know, if the senior give a try with the intubation, you understand? Senior give a try with intubation. Many times it happens. For example, how many of you are expert in intubation? Please tell honestly here how many of you have done intubation successfully yeah please let me know in the comment section all right so uh, yes i can see many yeah good good to know actually so many of you done it but some cases we may got stuck right some cases we may got stuck so then you know immediate the senior who is standing we ask them rather than doing a you know major you know cricothyroidectomy right so this is the thing so please consider sometime the tricky things in the exam, right? So, cricotyrectomy or intubation, also they will play with some of the words actually. This is a new one we just have seen in one of the exam actually. They ask about the immediate senior actually. Great. Moving forward, uh, this slide, by the way, guys, this is a surgery uh, class three or surgery and trauma. You will also find it in our notes section. By the way, you will also find it in our notes section. All right. Oh, by the way, I mean, we have a uh, collection of notes and the things. I think it's given to a lot of doctors. If someone is left, um, you know, uh, giving the notes and the things, we'll create a uh, some kind of, you know, inquiry in our group, like who is not receiving the notes yet. You know, you can drop your email. We'll send you the notes actually, okay? Gradually after the classes actually. Make sure, you know, your admission is already processed or processing. So, that's just make sure actually, all right? We'll get back to you on that. <clears throat> Next one, that securing the nest or the IV fluid, you already, I think, mentioned about that. All right, so that is the thing. Yes, my dear, I mean, if anyone is <laughs> yeah, left, we'll send you, don't worry, actually. You know, we'll create a, um, you know, inquiry after the class and we'll ask, you know, those not received notes, put your Gmail, you know, and we'll send gradually, okay? I mean, a lot of doctors been registering, you can understand, all right, great. Securing the neck over the fluid, already the answer is given, you know, we try to secure the neck first, actually, because it may get more injured by that time. Okay, now a controversial thing, a little bit. Uh, have you realized that there is a position called Trent de Legbach position? Have you ever heard this term while reading the surgery during the MBBS? 
All right. Now, how scientific is that? For many years, you know, the patients has been put into Trendelenburg and reverse Trendelenburg position, actually. What do you think nowadays in modern surgery or modern emergency, are they still using Trendelenburg position? What is your opinion? Let's see, you guys. Let me know in the comment section. What do you think nowadays? Are they using it? commonly in emergency trauma or any major surgical fields. The answer, like, you know, you need to consider countries like Australia, UK, USA. All right. So nowadays, they're not using it, actually. All right. So, yeah. So this is the thing. All right. So why I put this? Because some of your question stem will offer this one. Some of the question stem will offer this one. All right, like, you know, but, you know, uh, we don't go for that one. That they will offer you secure the neck, IV fluid, airway cleaning, train delengbar position. So nowadays we even don't use train delengbar position. So what those co particular thing, uh, usually, you know, uh, not much in use scientifically. Even if you see my, what, where is the reference I'm talking about right now? The reference is Medscape. If you see, if you just type train delengbar position and go to Medscape, some good websites will tell you RSCGP, RCH, Medscape, okay, and a good references actually. So they said like, you know, nowadays, be, it's been a, quite a controversial. That means some surgeons, they, if they feel they're using it, some are not using it. In Australia, in terms of Australia, mostly they're not using it actually, right? All right. Now, after the airway, airway, I mean, we just finished, like airway can be cleaned, airway can be given intubation in airway there can be given like you know you can also do things like you know cricothyroidectomy right those kind of things you can do actually also some small pro, pros and cons we talk like you know you can also inform the senior if you cannot do an intubation right so just be aware of that when the next important thing is coming is almost similar to that abc that is the breathing things actually all right the interesting cartoon i'm not sure you know how many of you like cartoonized things but that's okay if someone is present in the respiratory room and can't breathe properly, can't breathe properly. For example, let me give you a scenario. Try to make a diagnosis, my dear doctors. Let me give you a scenario. Try to make a diagnosis. A person who presented in the emergency room, you, the attending doctor, you put the stethoscope, you find the right-sided reduced air entry, right-sided reduced air entry. And I hope you are getting it. And percussion note is dull. Percussion note is dull. So in that case, what do you think? Quick answer, guys, you don't, you don't have time. You know, quick answer, please. Okay, most of the answers are coming as pneumothorax. Well done, actually. You know, in our country, you know something, you know, we call a very nice, that particular thing, you know? And it looks kind of like this. You know, we call it bamboo. You know, have you seen a lot of bamboo and, you know, bamboo in the forest. But in our country, you know, we also used this word as a bash, you know, uh, means, you know, you, you got fooled, you know. So sometimes, you know, we got bambooed. Now, my question was what? I don't know why I'm saying, telling this that, you know, you got bambooed because my question was reduced air entry, reduced air entry, one side. Okay. From that one, you are telling, okay, this is pneumothorax. I understand pneumothorax but do consider <clears throat> it can be hemothorax too now what was the next point percussion note what was the percussion note percussion note was dull my quick question is in pneumothorax the percussion <clears throat> i'm sorry about that uh is the percussion note is dull normally or is it it should be hyper resonant isn't it isn't it should be hyper resonant but i said dull then where is your diagnosis is going so that means, my dear doctors, for pneumothorax, let's, I hope you are taking note with a pen and pad. For pneumothorax, it is hyper resonant. It is dull percussion note. Is it clear, guys? So sometimes, because you've been hurry in the exam hall, and if you don't know the small tricks, okay, so you can be in trouble. So mostly, they'll tell you road traffic accident and things like that. Yes, some people might think about consolidation, woody dull and those things. But, you know, you have to also see the scenario. Most cases, emergency room, they will be coming up, you know, 
after a road traffic accident or something like that. And then this thing is happening. Okay, then you'll see, okay, this is an emergency, either pneumothorax, hemothorax, and <clears throat> all these things are important. Great. All right. Little trick question, guys. How do you feel after this question? Feeling good, feeling lost, or feeling, yeah. Okay, doable, right? You know, if we know from the beginning, it is doable. No, 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 don't say lost. You know, someone said feeling nostalgic. You know, can you explain that? You know, or this thing has happened. I'm not sure, you know, want to know a little bit more why that has become nostalgic to someone. Oh, okay, four, after four years. Okay, okay, good point. Okay, so this is the thing, guys. You know, uh, it can be pneumothorax. Some cases, it can be hemothorax as well. Then ABC, obviously circulation. Many of the shock cases, I repeat, many of the shock cases, the first answer is expected is IV fluid, circulation, right? Many cases, road traffic accident, what to do? Lot of, loss of lot of blood. Patient going into hypovolemic shots. What is your answer? IV fluid, okay? So two tricks I will try to teach you here about that. Particularly in MC exam, they use it. Okay. A patient presented to the patient, say 40 year male patient, 40 year male patient, presented to the emergency room. All right. 40 year male patient presented to emergency room. There is massive blood loss. Right. Patient is going into shock. He's vitals like blood pressure is say uh, currently 90 by 60 and pulse is somewhere around 110 so patient situation is not that good right situation is not that good right so in that case what we should do next all right what we should do next immediate next yes a b c d all these things are fine but mostly in these cases yes blood would be okay uh, if you like but takes some time so we'll start with iv fluid immediately we'll start iv fluid now among the iv fluid which iv fluid among the iv fluids name some iv fluids which iv fluid and these particular things are tested in exam okay some said isotonic Answer, it is correct. You will be also seen some few things which is called crystalloid in the main exam. Can we give crystalloid? Can we give crystalloid? Answer, yes, we, we, we can. In between colloid and crystalloid, we can give crystalloid. <clears throat> Your question says, crystalloid not available. Colloid available. What to do? There was a question like that. Answer, in that case, we'll give colloid. If crystalloid not available, we can give colloid. Please remember this, very important lines. So normally, isotonic fluids, isotonic fluids, crystalloid. You can eventually give blood after cross-matching. Okay, so these are the thing. Name one product that is very similar to <clears throat> blood, which is also isotonic. Name one product, you know, in, in among the IV fluid, which is very similar to blood. Okay, some people say. Hartman solution, have you said? Yeah, Hartman solution, have you heard that particular thing? So Hartman solution, yeah, which is quite a similar to the blood can be used actually. Now guys, this is one particular type of scenarios. This is one particular type of scenarios actually. So. Think about isotonic, think about crystalloid, think about Hartman. All these types, so let me write that term, Hartman. All these terms I have seen coming in the exam, not all together, separately. So either of them can be your answers. Now, another type of thing we need to always check in the question, after initial resuscitation, what to do next? Many times our questions are like then. After initial resuscitation, what to do next? What does that mean? 
after initial resuscitation, what to do next? What does that mean? Does they already give IV fluid or they're planning to give it? Quick question. After giving initial, after initial resuscitation, what to do next? That means after giving IV fluid, after that resuscitation, things are done. I mean, that can include many things, but fluids are given. Fluids are mostly given. That means in that cases, you can consider even drugs or consider some kind of invasive management later. What to do after initial resuscitation. So ABC is done. What you are doing next, what you are planning next. So my dear doctors, always check in your question whether this particular line has written or not. Because if it is not written, your answer will be IV fluid. If it is not written, surely your answer is going to be IV fluid. Right? Is it clear to everyone? If initial resuscitation not done, surely you need resuscitation. All right? So this is a one particular thing you need to understand. Great. Coming to the point, circulation. There is this, this is different type of fluids and the circulation, guys. Uh, we can say particular uh, few words here. Example, normal, hypotonic, hypertonic. Now, I'll go with one by one example. Example of a normal fluid. Before I, you know, use that one, let's see who can answer back that one. Example of a, you know, uh, like isotonic, actually, better to say not normal, isotonic. Give an example of an isotonic fluid. What is that? Give an example, one isotonic fluid. I think everyone knows and very popular that is used, the very famous normal saline. Normal saline. Next coming. And for what purpose it is used? If someone is starting, studying after a long time, they might forget. So example, the simple diarrhea, vomiting, this particular cases, a similar volume of things are lost, right? A similar, you know, volume things are lost. So in those cases, you know, you, you cover up with a similar type of fluid. So that is the normal saline, or which is the isotonic. So vomiting, diarrhea cases, we use the isotonic. Now coming to second point, as you all can see, this is hypotonic. Now in hypotonic, what is major? What is more important? Okay, those join later, you know, we're discussing uh, emergency and trauma so, uh, topic and we are discussing circulation. Okay, so here we go. Like hypotonic, example one, hypotonic fluid. What is example of one hypotonic fluid? Example, the DADNS. Example, you have seen a lot of dengue or dengue patients. Also, post-surgical lot of cases, right? So on those cases, we know we use particularly this fluid actually, this hypotonic fluid. This is a classic example, DA, DNS. These are the example of hypotonic fluid. Last but not the least, the last one that is coming up is a hypertonic fluid, hypertonic fluid. What is an example of a hypertonic fluid? I'm, I'm sure rather than hypertonic, hypertonic comes in our uh, mouth more faster. So example of a hypertonic is a, yes, I can see a lot of names. People are telling that is the manitol. Now, also tell in which cases we use manitol. Let's example a head injury case, a rotary accident, a head injury cases. Okay, we clearly use a lot of manitol actually in those cases. Great, good job, guys. I know. So, see, diarrhea vomiting cases, normal saline, then hypertonic. You know why we use it? You know to reduce intracranial pressure. Uh, if more intracranial pressure, more head injury. I repeat, more intracranial pressure, more injury because brain matter is they will try to suppress with more pressure. This is one of the point. 10% dextrose or hypotonics, you know, yeah, you can use it as well. So we give an example. We also give what are the type of fluids. We already discussed about colloid and the crystalloids. Normally we use crystalloid. Crystalloid not available, you can consider colloid in that case. This is how the questions can be tested in the exam. This one is not a recall class. So, you know, we're not really solving the question. Probably in next classes, you know, um, things will be more clear, you know, how question or also you can see some of my YouTube videos, there are recall videos we have posted how, you know, question solving looks like, you know, you can see that one, right? Some special situations, please take notes for that. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to tell a few special points and I may add some one to extra words. So if you have a pen paper, will be highly appreciated actually, okay? So I'm just giving you a uh, few second time, you know, if you can bring up your, um, you know, pen pad and all these things will be really, really great. All right. 
Okay. Now let me see the comment section. How it is going, guys? You know, are you feeling bad? You know, as like you know, in part two, you know, we keep asking the patients, are you feeling okay? You know, should I go slow? Should I go faster? Or is it okay, guys? The speed. You know, yeah, a little bit more speed might be in future. You know, yeah, because early classes, okay. But uh, is it understandable? You know, you can hear me well. Can you follow me well, actually? I try to follow a decent speed. Normally, you know, when I talk, I talk a little faster. But uh, for class times, you know, I try to use a decent speed so that everyone can understand. All right. Great. Speed is okay. Okay. Just checking with the things. And, you know, just one minute timer is given. Well done, guys. Thank you so much. Right, right. And I'll also answer a lot of questions. Don't worry after the session. I mean, you may have some uh, experience related inquiries. I'll be trying to, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's already in the notes section, but, you know, we'll talk about that one. Don't worry. Just, you know, focus on the classes for now, my dear. All right. Now, first one is coming. I'm highlighting uh, electrolyte. Electrolyte will teach you more in the surgery. Very important topic for exam. One electrolyte question is very important, you know, always coming in exam. Now, the very popular one among them is this potassium, calcium, and this sodium. And sodium one is more related to your, um, what should I say, that your fluid actually. Now, if there is a case of, ex, you know, extreme hyponatremia, why I'm saying extreme hyponatremia, what range of, you know, is called extreme hyponatremia or severe hyponatremia when sodium level is below 120? I hope you remember that. That was MBBS topic. If you forget, just check it or take a note. Okay, I'll check the sodium levels, mild, moderate, severe. In surgery, we'll talk more about these things. So uh, severe hyponatremia considered, I mean, below 120. Our case here is given 115. Now, what do you think, you know, what would be the management in this case? All right. Of course, we'll consider some kind of fluids, uh, some kind of, of course, something mixed with sodium. So there is a two option. One is a 0.9% and one is a 3%. So which one is for this case, actually? The answer is a 3% one, actually. Yes, it is also ideal proper history and all this thing very well. I mean, sharp, someone is sharp, actually. And But, you know, in MCQ question, you will not be given those things. But in part two question, if you tell that one, you know, uh, that will be carrying more mark. So 3%, um, let's consider that one. And what should be the speed of giving? Like normally we correct maybe a decent speed, but in this, you know, hyponatremia cases, is it like decent, faster or slow or quite, should I say very slow? Answer is a very slow very slow and the reason behind that mind if you don't do it very slowly it can cause some damage what damage is that it it is known as i hope you are writing it is called central pontine myelinosis because of the gradation uh, gradient difference like fluid shifted from this side to that side it can cause massive damage actually okay so please write that term it is called central pontine myelinosis Next question, is it reversible or irreversible? Like see, a lot of conditions are reversible in disease-wise, right? But this one, my dear, is an irreversible one. As like, sometimes I use the word compare and contrast. Okay, so example, have you heard this term, giant cell arteritis or temporal arteritis? What it can cause, I'll teach you in rheumatology, it can cause blindness. It can cause blindness. Now, if you don't give a steroid, in the first hand, it can cause blindness, giant cell arteritis. So if that blindness and, you know, the vision loss, better to use the word vision loss happens, is that temporary or is that permanent again? So that is an irreversible loss if you don't use it. So that's why we're comparing and contrasting. That is an irreversible loss. Now, same thing in the vision loss. Can you give an example of a, you know, reversible blindness? Okay, let's see. Let's just, you know, play with things, actually. Can you give an example of a reversible blindness? Like if this happens, for well, the next moment, it will be fine. Okay, um, cataract is okay, but I'll take the answer TIA, transient ischemic cataract, 
more specific word, if you get full mark, if you say amaurosis fugus, if you say amaurosis fugus, you, you must be heard that someone couldn't see for a while, then they start seeing things well. So this is a small mini stroke or amaurosis fugus. Okay, keep it in mind in that case. Great. So this is a great thing, um, like the stroke or TIA. So from here, we just jump there actually. Okay, so severe hyponatremia management, you know, 3% NSCL. Do it very slowly. Why? To avoid central parental manualysis. I hope that is clear to all. Okay, next situation is coming actually. Okay, I hope so you turn on the page and write in the next page. Okay, another special situation. It is the, you know, does, I mean, it's quite a common, right? You know, of course, many people have diabetes and they might need surgery. Now, if someone is taking the very common drug metformin, what is your plan? With taking metformin, you go to surgery or you switch to something before going to surgery? Quick question. Because if you remember from your old memories, any emergency situations or critical situation, we use what? We use insulin actually. So just before the surgery, we switch to insulin. Okay. So this is a special situation actually. All right. Great. So this is the thing, you know, one of the special situation, diabetes mellitus and the surgery. All right. Now, one more thing I want to add, like diabetes mellitus and the surgery or di in diabetes mellitus. In endocrine, we'll learn more about the diabetes. One more thing, you will find a lot of questions related to DKA. One more question, very important, related to DKA. I hope you are writing along with me. DKA. Diabetic ketoacidosis. How we understand? I mean, it's very, very high uh, blood sugar level. Is it more common in type 1 or type 2? More common in type 1, but type 2 can definitely also have this. Okay, so, and often the nursing station, the nurses, they come and tell you, doctor, I don't find the reading. I guess it's very high. So they can also make diagnoses regarding, I mean, this particular. So only way left to rule out, you know, what's the blood sugar level is to send it to the lab. That is, so in glucometer, some cases, it will not come. And you know, patient has cosmal breathing, patient is drowsy, deteriorating, smell of acetone, right? Already history of diabetes, all these things would be there. You can check it like, you know, clinical feature of DK. The most popular thing, because we are discussing some fluid, what is the first line? What is the first line of management in DK? First line of management of DK. Of course, we give late fluid. Excellent answer. What type of fluid? You know, is it the normal saline one or the DA one? You know, we prefer first answer. We prefer the NS first, actually. This is the thing. Now, in exam, they also ask the second line. As a second line, what do we give? That means after the fluid, fluid we give to also correct all the things actually, sugar, electrolytes, and all this thing, yeah. What is second line? Now in the second line, interesting. If someone please add, there, there is a thing, insulin. Have you heard about <clears throat> insulin IM? Have you heard? I think everyone heard. So in DK cases, uh, keep giving the insulin IM till the blood sugar level is 10, okay? Different places, management can be a little different, but this is how it is given in Davidson. So IM insulin up to, it becomes reaches 10. Now, do you know when you give insulin, if this is a cell, if this is a extracellular fluid, the potassium is in, this potassium enters inside the cell, leaving the blood, less of potassium, less potassium. So as a third line, are you sure that, you know, we are going to use KCL? Everyone agreed on that one? So first line fluid, second line insulin. When you give insulin, this potassium enter inside the cell and you need to correct this hypokalemia, hypokalemia, it is less potassium. So more potassium or less potassium in any way, not good for heart. More potassium or less potassium in any way not good for heart. So you need to come up with KCL. 
can you name some food which has uh, extra potassium anyone well done bananas yeah great yeah broccoli good one oh, very coffin yeah <clears throat> coconut water yes coconut water yes well done so guys you know also keep it in mind if you're doing exercises and the things you also need to keep your hydration and these things well so make sure you also eat banana and these kind of things would be good actually yeah great coming back to uh, this thing special situation we're discussing and now getting into the feature of shock all right are you in shock guys so far i hope not are you in shock not yet okay yeah, usually we don't practice I am insulin, you are correct, but some emergency situation to, you know, put down the level, some cases we use, okay? Normally, we know, you you know, I also know I used to use also work in ICU, so we use the infusion and things like that, yeah, but there is a provision like that, yes. No, no, normally it is subcutaneous. Let me tell you, always is subcutaneous, only for DKA, if you see the Davidson, it is written in small voice, I am actually. Okay, a bit shock is okay, but not in full shock. My dear, I mean, let's go and start. Okay, let me take my face. Maybe my face is giving more shock features, I guess. So I take my face and put a cartoon face would be good actually. Okay, coming to the shock management, how we understand the shock in the question. So in in shock related thing how it is given the patient admitted to the emergency room because he was in a road traffic accident or patient fall down from a roof patient was in barn um, incidents all right so a lot of type of shock and things patient has previous uti and now developed shock so a lot of type of shock are there now one thing i want to know from you what are the features of shock yeah what are the feature of shock Great. All right. So in that case, very classic features. I mean, low blood pressure, low blood pressure, you know, which we count as hypotension, very easy to understand in the main exam. Then pulse high, that is tachycardia. Patient may not be responsive in some cases. Okay. Someone said is more correct. Low blood pressure, rapid 3D pulse. Well done. Can we also add cold clammy skin, guys? Most of the shock, most of the shock, hypovolemic, cardiac, neurogenic. We say cold clammy skin, except for septic shock, which does not have cold clammy skin, rather than it is opposite. Clear, everyone? Yeah. All right. Now, for every type of shock, you know, I mentioned earlier, our answer would be fluid, fluid, fluid. Now, example, a patient who has a history of some cardiac disease presents to hospital, you know, probably with a MI attack. After two days, after two days, patient is getting into shock feature, like BP is down, pulse, which is high patient less responsive. Now, it looks probably like a cardiogenic shock. See, post MI, a lot of things can happen. I will teach you in the cardiac. Like there are like six, seven situation can ha happen uh, post MI, but one of them is a cardiogenic shock. Now, what you should do immediately? This is a question to you. What you should do immediately? Now, well done. Many are saying inotropes, not going with the IV fluid. Very talented group. So, uh, but giving IV fluid is the wrong answer. All I want to say, IV fluid giving, I mean, in big amount is a wrong answer here. We don't give it actually. Just for channel opening, we give it. But normally, inotropes. Now, what does inotropes mean? It is adrenaline, dobutamine the drugs used to increase the blood pressure. Coming back to this one. So cardiogenic recent MI, you know, and pressure changes, ionotropes. Hypovolemic, again, in rotary accident, or even because of diarrhea, vomiting, it can happen. We give IV, we give fluid. Very simple, we give fluid. Normal saline. Neurogenic shock. Interesting. 
in Eugene Shock, again, ABC. Also, please important considering securing the neck. If you're offered securing the neck in neurogenic shock, is of course that one it can be. Last but not the least, what is the appropriate treatment for septic shock? This was the exam question last year. Answer was antibiotic. Answer was antibiotic. It was like that, which is the most appropriate treatment for a septic shock. It is antibiotic. Which type of antibiotic? If I go in a little bit more deep, is it a more gram positive or coverage or gram negative coverage? Of course, it will be a broad spectrum with more gram negative coverage. A broad spectrum with more gram negative coverage. That is the thing because E. coli often are the culprits. Management of shock, few things are written, clinical features are written, like cold, clammy skin, and all these things. You already know it well. Yeah, trauma management, which I just now said it. Yeah, more like, you know, a bit theoretical, but try to follow the words which I just said. It will be fine, actually. Any After any situation, this can happen. Like after tension pneumothorax, after cardiac tamponade, this particular thing can happen. Now, these are another two emergencies which we will discuss very shortly. Tension pneumothorax, cardiac tamponade, another two very big emergencies. So hemorrhagic shock, fluid replacement, already we have mentioned that one. It's a little bit more theoretical from books or notes, yeah. We're talking about two emergencies coming out. This is pericardial tamponade. Now, for pericardial tamponade, let me see which of my dear doctor can add there is a triode for uh, this particular condition. And it has name Bex triode. What are the components of Bex triode? What are the components of Bex triode? Let me start with the word hypotension. All right. So in the Bex triode, as you all can see, you know, so uh, hypotension, muffled heart sound, distended neck pain. It's a classic for cardiac tamponade. If you already gaze well cardiac tamponade, then quickly tell what is that management of cardiac tamponade. You know, you need a big syringe right here. You need a probably a big syringe here to, you know, draw that, you know, additional fluid from that pericardial layer, actually. So it is called pericardiosynthesis. Quick question. Is this an emergency situation? Is pericardial uh, tamponade is an emergency situation, 100%. As like pneumothorax, immediately you have to do something. Otherwise, patient is gone. Very big emergency. As same as compare contrast, same as pneumothorax. If you just don't do the procedure immediately, patient will die. Management of pericardial tamponade, based on clinical virginity and of course by extra and all this thing. So by mainly pericardiosynthesis. All right. Wonderful. Here is that link. Cardiosynthesis. Now, next coming is a tension pneumothorax. Do you agree that tension pneumothorax management also can be depending on chest X-ray? Now, not everyone can guess that what I'm just now saying. Or is it just a clinical finding you got and you have to do it immediately? All right, now good, good one actually. Mostly it is clinical. Agreed, guys. Like, you know, if we're talking about tension pneumothorax, the biggest emergency, tension pneumothorax. You must be seen in a lot of movie. Like, you know, how many of you have seen, you know, that particular uh, medical drama series? Better to say what drama series? The Good Doctor. So in the beginning of that, you know, seen the first one of the good doctor, you know, the procedure he was doing was the tension pneumothorax procedure, but of course it has been exaggerated. But, you know, my professor used to tell us very old days, you know, where that time you don't have hospital everywhere and maybe in the village areas and the thing. So they even has history of using the, you know, the pain hole putting in the chest actually and help releasing that extra air. Okay, so that is shown a little exaggerated in the movies, but it is not a lie, actually. This kind of thing has been done by the doctors to save life, actually. So tension pneumothorax, a very big emergency. The tension pneumothorax also, it is also related to, yes, X-ray, CT, or radiology, and this kind of things. All right, so this is important. Now, coming to that particular point, let me 
turn off myself. Yes. We're discussing guys tension pneumothorax. If anyone joined a little late, you know, we are just discussing some of the emergencies like um, pericardial tamponade, uh, previous one. Now it's tension pneumothorax. All right. So we have to eventually put a chest tube. All right. Get familiar with the term needle thoracostomy. Insertion of the needle. How we learned in MPPS, insertion of the needle in the second intercostal space. We don't now use this term in here. We use the word needle thoracostomy. That's how it will be given in the exam, you know, question paper as MCQ, needle thoracostomy. That means insertion of the needle, actually. And that is our management, right? Most cases, that is our management. We quickly put the stetho, we check uh, which side it has been affected, right? Like, you know, so reduced air entry in the right side. Then we quickly percuss. Okay, here is the thing. Patient is almost dying. So we just try to quickly release the pressure. Now, two scenario comes in front of you. One, the patient is already dying. One, some cases, patient may be stable. Now, and another thing, in case of a stable patient, there is a provision of doing chest x-ray. Of course, this type of patient we don't send for radiology department. We can do x-ray in the emergency department. Can we? Can we do an x-ray in the emergency department? Can we do an ultrasound in the emergency department? Definitely, yes, we can do. All right. So those ultrasound, those x-rays we are talking about, those are the portables and quickly can be done. All right. Now, yeah, so most of the time clinical, there is no time for diagnosis. It is very clearly written. This section has been taken from Oxford. Yeah, so that you can understand, you know, the reference I'm using is reliable. So we use chest decompression, I mean, immediate decompression, insertion of the needle, actually. All right. And later we give water seal drainers. Later we give, so the three things, three things, quick diagnosis, needle thoracostomy, chest strain. This is a needle thoracostomy, as you can see. This is how radiologists can be given. You can see a CT scan of a pneumothorax. Some cases, X-rays can be given. X-ray, I'm sure you have seen multiple times. That's why I brought that CT. Great. So this is one thing about that tension pneumothorax. Tension pneumothorax. Now, some regular pneumothoraxes on the basis of X-ray, like open or closed, bit more stable. You know, we do have the time based on the X-ray. So somebody here... Tension pneumothorax, let's not wait for x-ray in the exam or even in real life. But there are other types of pneumothoraxes like open pneumothorax, closed pneumothorax, where your patient is stable. You can also take decision on the basis of the x-ray. I'll teach you something in the respiratory, which is called rule of 25, not here actually. So rule of 25 on the basis of pneumothorax. <clears throat> let's keep it for future, no worries. Interesting thing is coming up in the beginning of the class said, you know, what if a honeybee bites you, what will be the problem? Okay, a uh, quick question by a doctor, any option for extra? Usually it is not, you know, if you see, usually it's better not to, you know, you may lose the patient. <clears throat> but <clears throat> in, in that emergency room, some cases you can do. If you see the patient is still stable, some cases you can take risk actually, but do not send the patient to the radiology department. Like if you suspect and if you're not sure, I repeat, when you are not sure, then you can do it. Okay, but if you are sure that, oh, it looks very clear like pneumothorax, then you know we should not you know, wait. Hmm. Great. All right. Coming to next one, guys, you know how we lot of things do in our countries. Sometimes a one, two things can be a little different according to the Australian guidelines, you know. So you have, from now on, you need to see the clinical vaginity of how overseas they do actually. All right, so this is important. Okay, coming up to the next one, you can see a very cute honeybee. I'm not sure you find it cute or not. I found it very cute. There was a movie as well, isn't it, guys? You know, very early days of, you know, animated movie. If you remember Bee or Honey Bee, I forget that name. It was a very uh, um, classic, but it was nice, actually. Uh, yeah, Bee, right? That movie name, actually. You know, now, I don't know how they made all this thing, animation, other thing. It was, it has a story, things. Yeah. 
nice movie actually as animated two animated movies i like i mean i don't watch much animated movies but b is one and you know there's another one was a car actually i think car or dakar so car was racing you know car was talking interesting cars i think yeah i'm not sure you saw that one or not anyways okay coming to that point you probably very happy and you are walking into the streets of australia you know suddenly a honeybee saw you maybe like you okay person is going let's bite this person and suddenly came and bite you uh, for a second you know you thought what just happened but you realized later a honeybee was there actually bite and ran away okay maybe it can be a, a female honeybee or whatever it is you know <laughs> in any way so uh, now suddenly you saw a lot of swelling comes out in that particular part and secondly you started to having breathlessness now what grade do you think you are in okay no sorry for bad joke <laughs> that's okay anyways bees honey bees honeys anyone biting doesn't matter but you know here something what is happening is the patient is having a big swelling and patient is having breathlessness yes now here is the thing patient is since having breathlessness patient quickly went to the emergency room when you put the stethoscope you also find wheeze now tell me mild moderate severe this is a case of severe wheeze this is a case of severe wheeze because you find chest finding remember one thing severe cases you find chest finding this is the thing now let's start from the opposite the treatment what is the management for severe quick question what is the management for severe cases all right giving simple steroid tablet will be enough answer is a no here answer would be adrenaline and adrenaline you know you give adrenaline yeah so that's the thing all right so you give adrenaline that's very important now some people ask me quick question doctor do we need to study the doses answer is a no but except for one or two cases yeah except for one or two cases so this is one of those cases one is to 1000 there is a famous mcq that comes like you know how how much you know adrenaline do we give so one is to 1000 in 0.5 very well done so this is you have to remember only for this one but otherwise you don't have to actually great well done guys you know some of you more expert on the dosing and things so one is to 1000.5 you know if you remember these particular things will be great all right well done guys very impressive so severe bitten by bees honeybees whatever else. Um, and you know you have this symptom now if it's a not chest symptom but you know still there is a lot of swelling and the things out there now what to do and i'm coming from the opposite the treatments all right so in that case what do you think so in that case the treatment would be yes so now we do have an option it is called prednisolone corticosteroid the tablet you know lifesaver tablet you need to give it what if it is just a mild actually okay what if you you as a doctor try to examine mm, there is a like you know bite marks and the things you as a you confuse that is it bitten by bees or honeys whatever it is in that case what is the management in that case whatever the cases you know if it is bitten by bees or honeys or whatever in that case the management is antihistamine right so mild i <laughs> let me repeat let me repeat again in that case so mild cases mild cases antihistamine antihistamine moderate cases steroid please keep it in mind even mild cases you may need steroid you know if it is not subsiding severe cases finally adrenaline clear everyone mild moderate severe guys i'm checking again is my speed is okay with you guys compatible understandable yeah with time progresses we may increase the speed in future a lot all right 
uh, moderate case. Moderate case, you know, you know, you give tablet prednisolone. You don't need to give IV, okay? In moderate case, usually. All right, then. Wonderful. Now, you must be seeing, I put an injection. I mean, when I am adrenaline, uh, it is when severe. The answer of that one, these are the two extract from two questions. When I am adrenaline, the answer when it is severe, when chest symptoms are present. Secondly, when AP pain. Now, that's an interesting, how come this word AP pain came up? Now, AP pain is a thing. Now, think in that way. The person who is bitten by the honeybees, you know, the same places you are walking, you know, that honeybee if see you may again try to, you know, bite you. Is that a possibility? Yes, of course, you know. So the same places, you know, uh, there's always chances. Now, the question is, the second attack, can it be more dangerous? The second attack, what do you think? Can it be more dangerous or is it the same? Now, if you take back to you to a little bit, microbiology or immunology uh, things, you know, the word re-exposure, you know, more histamine, mast cell release are during the second exposure and can be life-threatening this time. To avoid that one, even the kids can be counseled in that way to carry some kind of EpiPen injection in their bag. So if this thing has happened with someone with moderate and severe, they are usually uh, requested to carry EpiPen in their bag, actually. Because if this thing happened again, and Australia is a country where, you know, uh, in some, you know, you don't expect this thing in Sydney, Melbourne cities, or even in uh, Queensland cities, but if you go in the side, yeah, uh, in that case, yeah, yeah, that's for the next time, my dear. Yeah, good question. Is it the same time? No, it's next time. When EpiPen, that's for the next time, actually, because it's just like a compare contrast. Yeah, let me tell you something. You know, the when morphine was introduced, let's see your, um, you know, some side ideas. Do you know when morphine was first introduced, guys? Or, or when it is was massively used, actually. I mean, let me tell that one. When it was massively used, the morphine, you know, any cases, my dear. Yes, well done. Uh, it was during World War, actually. It was during World War. I, th I think in the first World War. So they used to carry that particular injection. Why? Any cases. Why they used to carry and an injection in their pocket. Because, you know, suddenly a bomb is coming. It was very nasty, right? Yeah, so it was very nasty. So a bit less painful death, I would say. I mean, every death is painful, but a bit less painful death. Suddenly, you know, uh, a lot of bullet came. Suddenly, a you know, bomb that burst and, you know, your whole body is burning. And also some people put the other soldiers into fire and the things. So to reduce the severity, so morphine was introduced that time, actually. I mean, it was discovered already, but massively it was introduced that time. So many soldiers, they used to carry this uh, morphine shots, actually. I would recommend, a, uh, I, I watch a lot of movies. Movies also sometimes for learning, expand lot of ideas i'm not sure the high one of the highest grossed rating uh series its name is band of brothers actually by name don't get confused uh it is a movie related to war sequence actually band of brothers imdb rating is 9.2 you do imagine that actually all right so genuine 9.2 rating since last 10 12 years actually it is a hbo series it was there uh, that one has shown, you know, war like a very different way, actually, and relations, how things works. If you get time, please watch it. Actually, it's like 10 uh, only episode, actually. But, you know, like something best what I have seen, actually. All right. Now, guys, uh, okay. Someone asked, you know, when I am or I, you, don't, you know, see, I mean, let me tell you a very <clears throat> easy thing after this one. Why I'm telling this about... Um, morphine because they have to also carry that one the same goes with epipen they have to also carry that one so comparing and contrasting 
this is one of the thing next thing that is coming someone asked you know when i am an iv see it depends on your comfort level actually a very popular question in the exam another compare contrast is coming agitated psychotic patient you know patient is coming like that to you you know where is doctor you know they might <clears throat> even attack the doctor some cases in that case you know are you planning to give iv no otherwise you know patient will take the you know this thing has happened in one of our wards actually the patient took the injection and put in the doctor's buttock actually you know <laughs> so <laughs> make sure you know this thing doesn't happen uh, so uh, make sure you know you, you know this kind of patient you give i am actually you know this is, this is one of the thing and also a uh, time actually so iv and all this thing may some take some time so i am is fine actually giving you know so many shots wherever i am available we try to give i am shots actually you know because those are mostly one shots so mostly those are one shots we try to give i am okay remember in that way <laughs> okay sorry about the nasty joke uh, not joke it was real time actually yeah Another funny, some of the funny things I'll tell you uh, during the surgery about, you know, uh, anyways, don't worry. So I hope compare contrasting you find uh, useful. Do let me know in future, you know, uh, <laughs> yes, do let me know in, in future. I'll try to use more compare contrast in that way, actually. Great. Coming to next one, head trauma, another emergency that is coming up, actually. Heterom, I would say in that way, while you, you know, go through this MC journey, you will already have a lot of head trauma, actually, you know, and those will be endogenous head trauma. So exogenous head trauma, road traffic accident, <clears throat> endogenous head trauma, MC exam, right? How about that one? That's interesting, right? Yes. All right. Now coming to this point, let's see, let me turn off my foreign being, I am showing my face. Okay, so mm, three things coming out. As you all can see, extradural hematoma, subdural hematoma, subarachnoid hemorrhage, stroke, TIA. Please let me know in the comment section, have you, you know, heard about all these conditions in your life? Have you heard about all these conditions in your life? Okay, I'm com coming and clearing one by one. Great. Okay. Stroke, we're not going to finish here. Stroke is a topic of our neurology. Okay, but it's that's an also emergency, you know, emergency because it will be mixed up with few things. Great. Now about the very first one, extradural hematoma and subdural hematoma. I'd like to use a word lucid interval. I hope you are writing, my dear doctors. Please write this word lucid interval. Okay. So let's start with some notes type of thing. Short, lucid interval, long lucid interval. Now, what is lucid interval, first of all? Again, same thing, little stories and things. Uh, that was a very long back thing when that time I was not doctor. I was in school or colleges, actually. You know, in, uh, I grown up in local city, not even in capital. So bikes are very common. I was never allowed to ride bikes, actually, because my father gave me some promises, promised me that you'll never <laughs> ride bike and things. Oh, okay, I promise. That's one of the reasons. But, you know, my friends used to, they ride very often, actually. One day, you know, we got called that, you know, some of our friends in accident and, you know, so we are quickly rushing towards the med medical. <clears throat> one friend, you know, somehow, you know, made a call by take help from someone nearby um, and they said like you know they're taking them to the hospital so we quickly rush to the hospital one of them is injured very badly one of them there was moderate injury and he was the one is having just you know less little bruises and the things so i said you are okay so he said yeah i'm fine so he was telling you know this happened you know uh, suddenly you know stone came up that's so and then the other two has been taken, especially one of them was a bit critical. Yeah, and he was unconscious. So we are really afraid that, you know, that time, you know, we all are like um, very young. So we all are afraid. And we are calling our parents as well that, you know, to send some help to the medical or call some senior doctors. Now, uh, one was taken because he was unconscious. Maybe uh, some of the surgeries and things were required that time. 
uh, one of them was taken to the dressing room because he was injured and maybe one arm was also broken. And he was fine. He was talking. Suddenly, while talking, he fell down. He fell down. Now, is that a good news, actually? Fall down. In, in these countries, the word fall down is very red flag. Fall down. All right? Sometimes we'll see that, you know, fall down. So fall down is not a good thing. So suddenly he fall down. We quickly uh, ask the doctors on the thing. Uh, sad, but true that, you know, um, later he was declared death. All right. So we all are surprised what just happened. He was the one who was most fine. He was talking. And immediately after that, doctors take him to the emergency room and the thing and couldn't get much time, actually. That particular time, the emergency services were also not that great as today's, actually. I was living in Sillet and that already one neurosurgeon is, you know, taking one of the guys. So don't have that much good as well. Anyway, sad but it was true. Now, coming to the point of um, what I'm trying to talk is, you see, he was talking and he was dead. So isn't it a bit short interval? Isn't it a very short interval? Like, you know, he was talking. So there's a term, we call it talk and die syndrome. Talk and dry syndrome. Right. So this thing has exactly has happened. So it was a short lucid interval. He was fine. He was talking with us in the same day after a few hours, he was dead. All right. So, you know, talk and die syndrome. If the same scenario happens in that way, a very popular thing in the exam, someone has a motorcycle accident. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Helmet is broken into two pieces. He was in the emergency room and uh, after 24 hours, he was released. Now, thing happens. After two weeks, patient is having some deteriorating level of consciousness. He was brought to the hospital. Okay. Now, what is the second scenario tells you? The second scenario tells you, I mean, when doctor take history, there was a history of head injury recently within a two weeks. Now, the second scenario is a scenario of sub- dural hematoma the first scenario i said about my friend who was talking and dying so that was the extra dural hematoma is this clear about the scenario i hope so you'll never forget now actually right one is that motorbike accident and one is that my friend actually right So here's a few things that is given so that you can see in, in extradural medial meningeal artery involved. Here, bridging vein involved. Here said by convex, here said crescent shape. Like, how do you understand Yeah, by this? So by convex, lens shape. You, must, you can be given CT scan. Please note, you can be given CT scans in the exam. And this one is a crescent shape. So anything crescent shape in the CT scan, it is possibility of subdural hematoma. Also, there will be histories. All right. All right. So what do you think? Uh, most of these cases, okay, let me repeat again. Let me repeat again. So here, as you can see, talk and die syndrome. This one developing gradually. CT scan can given directly in the exam. Yeah. Yes, of course, history is important. Like, you know, is there any, say, a popular in the exam, someone slept in a bathtub, a small injury, but it was there. All right. So that can be a possibility. Even a minor injury, the patient ignored. Not always that patient's hospital history is important, but any fall down history, any head injury history in last one, two weeks, or even can be month, that can be subdural hematoma. Is it clear, everyone, subdural hematoma? Is it clear, subdural hematoma? And if you're given CT scan, it will be a crescent shape, like a moon shape, like a moon shape. And epidural, a bit convex shape. And scenario, imagine that scenario, actually. No, it's just remember blood vessel involved. You can just read it by yourself. Nothing special, actually. All right. Nothing special here. One is blood vessel involved, one is brain involved. That's all. 
everything you don't need. I mean, what is important, I'll tell you definitely. Don't worry, guys. Yes, well done. Banana shape, pie shape, whatever the shape you like, you know, you can put. If you like moon more, if you put moon, if you like banana more, you put banana. But remember it, you know, that's most important. Yeah. All right, because this brings us to the point of the CT scan and things like that. So um, a very basic thing in, in, in the CT scans and relevant things that, you know, hemorrhagic things are looking white or black in, in CT scans. Because immediately we go for CT scans. So hemorrhagic thing is looks like more like a dense white or more black actually. So it's like more like a white. Yeah, it's like here you can see. All right. So more hemorrhages and things more white dense and we go for CT scan. MRI is often choice soft tissue lesion or extension of CT scan, any spinal relevant thing, any calcification, any soft tissue injuries, any meniscus type of injuries as well. All right, great. Moving forward, here's some CT scans as you all can see. This is epidural hematoma because biconvex lens shape. Biconvex, I can understand. This one is more like a crescent or you can say banana subdural hematoma. All right, great. Now, in this picture, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with this term, ventricular extension. Has a, any, any time your consultant or in your practice, you heard this term, this situation, related, you know, is a CT scan and there is ventricular extension and we think it is more serious condition. Even subarachnoid hemorrhage, we also find a lot of ventricular extension. So this particular place, we can see ventricle has deviated from the midline. We call it ventricular extension. Means more sad, more bad. Subarachnoid hemorrhage. Now, subarachnoid hemorrhage, I remember as a more like a butterfly. A butterfly is sitting a white, some kind of butterfly or frog which is sitting actually. I imagined as in this way, or a spider you can say, or you can, you know something better, you can also add here actually, because knowledge is for sharing, right? So spider, frog, butterfly, shape, yeah, white something that is related to subarachnoid hemorrhage. Special history, patient may have family history, patient may have kidney problem, like polycystic kidney disease, patient may have connective tissue disease problem like Marfan syndrome, all right? Eventually, there is development of Berry's aneurysm. I repeat, there will be development of Berry's aneurysm. I'll teach these things more in neurology, but we're just going through the emergencies now. So Berry's aneurysm, actually, and rupture of Berry's aneurysm, all right? So all these particular uh, situations, like especially subarachnoid hemorrhage, what we do, there's two procedures. Of course, initially drug like Nemocol, you heard this name, which is a calcium channel blocker. Okay, and more things are there. And there is two procedures that is coiling and clipping. Have you ever heard this term? A popular in the exam, they ask you, which one is better, coiling or clipping? All right, coiling or clipping. Another name of coiling is embolization. Another name of coiling is embolization. So don't get confused if they don't use the term coiling, rather they give embolization in the exam, all right? So my question was, coming back to the question, which one is better? Coiling is much better. But the coiling facility is not available in all the hospitals actually, all right? So this is another thing, great? So coiling actually, but the basic is clipping always like, any neurosurgeon who is amateur, they usually start with clipping things actually, okay? Coiling is more complicated, all right? Great. Uh, how about the management of epidural and subdural hematoma? Can anyone add? If there is epidural and subdural hematoma, how do we manage? Uh, do you have to perform a surgery? If you have to perform a surgery, what type of surgery is that? Have you heard this term, the bar hole surgery? 
have you heard this term bar hole surgery yes of course evacuation some kind of right you need to release that extra blood you see these bloods you just need to release those extra blood that's all you can co compare with same like uh, pneumothorax you can compare something with cardiac tamponade can you compare kind of similar you know we need to release the things which is creating the pressure damaging the brain you need to release that pressure clear same thing like a pneumothorax same thing like a pedic cardiac tamponade great wonderful guys Lastly, intraparenchymal hemorrhage, like it's like the other stroke, you can see, you know, like white lesion, very prominent. Uh, if you do MRI, you will you get to see more sections. Yeah, so that is the thing. Yeah, any hypertension is dangerous for the stroke. Everyone agreed? You know, there is a very popular in the exam. They asked three things. Let me tell you three important, you know, uh, nutshell for exam for a stroke. Number one is hypertension or uncontrolled hypertension. What is for MI or heart attack, which we called? What is number one? A risk factor. Come on, guys, we don't have that much time. So hyperlipidemia, hyperlipidemia. Yeah, anything related to atherosclerosis lipid. And then another popular one is a peripheral vascular disease. And that one goes with smoking. Smoking really, really aggravates that one. So these three, this sometime as a uh, number one risk, they might give you coming back to this. All right, so stroke, number one is a hypertension. Even subarachnoid hemorrhage, number one is often also hypertension. Okay, have you heard this kind of thing? Panda eyes, raccoon eyes. I put some cute pictures, but you know, original picture may not look this decent, right? The original situation may not look this panda eyes, you know. So what does it indicate? Forget about panda eyes. What does it indicate? It indicates base of the skull fracture or basal skull fracture. All right. So this is important thing to remember. Base of the skull fracture or basal skull fracture. Okay. Coming to that point. Um, yeah. Just remember it in that way. Also, in future, in orthopedics, I'll tell you, teach you two terms. One is it features of orbital floor fracture and zygomatic bone fracture. These two are also important technically for your exam. All right. For now, just remember the terms actually so that you don't fall, fall from the sky, you know, during orthopedics or those are enthusiastic. You can read it actually. Um, yeah. Orbital floor fracture, diagomatic bone fracture. These two things separately will also teach you in the orthopedics, actually. Now, a very commonly practiced, or let me give you a scenario. Guys, are you bored with the scenario-based things or should I just tell answers? That's better, actually. I mean, giving a little, you know, storyline is good or uh, just want to uh, check some... Uh, with my dear doctors, I mean, storyline, are you enjoying or, you know, should I just go more with that thing? Okay, everyone is enjoying. Okay. Now, uh, one thing that has happened, I'm sure you all has, you know, had history of shifting the houses. You know how tough it is, you know, holding things and shifting things. Like one time it happened, sadly, you know, because, you know, the most heaviest thing is, you know, the bed shifting. So, um, me and my father is just trying to, you know, uh, shift the bed and, you know, to put it in a separate place, you know, before we, you know, pull off the screws. So we have to hold it actually first, actually from one side, you know, I remember I was in med school that time I came for in during vacation and for the shifting purpose, we came. Um, now, while holding that one, uh, suddenly my father sit down or, and he, ne I never heard him shouting but for a moment you know a small shout came up like you know so uh what do you think what it could be in his case just think about the differential explore your ideas what do you think of course we quickly rush to the emergency and things like that okay if anyone from the previous batches uh, make sure you don't give a spoiler to the others. If anyone from previous batches, guys, when you come and attend something, 
uh, it's a new batch we are starting. So uh, make sure, you know, uh, we don't need to see your knowledge because you're already knowledgeable. We have given you the enough things. So it's better you don't answer these things, you know, which you have already repeated. Let the new doctors, I can see some previous doctors from previous batches are answering. You don't have to answer here, actually. Okay, let them, because they need to think, actually, all right? Yeah, please make sure you give them the space, like the thing. Actually, there's nothing like, you know, I'm not very impressed when I can see some of the previous batch they're answering because I have already told these things to them. Now, in this case, the answer and the scenario is, a, is a, you know, later it was diagnosed as a disc prolapse. You all are correct. Now, in the disc prolapse case, um, so we quickly take him to the doctor. So doctor said mm, some painkiller, this, that, this, that. But, you know, since his father, so he didn't give you even an x-ray and the things. So I was really surprised. You know, the orthopedics doctor sometimes, I mean, due respect to all, not all, like, but sometimes they're in very hurry, to be honest. So didn't give x-ray. So I was feeling like at least an x-ray should have been done or things like that. So I did an x-ray and things and some of my friends from the local, they're also in the local medical, actually, you know, they're studying and I said, no, no, we have a sir of physical medicine, you know, you should please go and check with him. It's your father, so don't take risk, actually. So with that x-ray, um, we, uh, before going to home, we went out for another um consultation as like you know typical patient actually you know uh, to be honest i mean one doctor if would have been give me enough assurance and the thing i would have been give a second thought now this doctor actually examined very well asked him to you know uh, you know stand on tiptoe and the thing so that means l4 l5 s1 and everything he examined well which the previous orthopedic doctor he didn't examine those things all right. So it is very clearly evident that, you know, he was giving time. He's trying to come, come up with a better diagnosis. And he also didn't tell anything about that uh, previous treatment. Uh, I was a bit also anxious. So as my father, so he said, sir, I just went and we have been prescribed. It didn't show the prescription, but we have been prescribed painkiller and this other drug, muscle relaxant. As you know, the, the doctor gave good treatment, but I, I just will add a very small one now tell me what is that a small one he added and that was the main jackpot drug there actually any cases actually that's why the storyline came up that was that you know jackpot drug and after that my father was also well actually a follow-up thing happened he also went through the some weight reduction and few things it was fine actually the answer let's come up with that answer so answer for that one was uh, giving a shot of a steroid all right, giving a shot of a steroid or a tablet steroid, actually. Now, quick question, why steroid here? All right, let's see, you know, who knows that explanation of this one, actually. It's a very important, actually, you know, and there's no problem in giving a steroid for a short treatment. Or let's tell the patient. You see, see, this is a disc prolapse. So there was an injury like that, right? So when there is an injury, there is local inflammation, edema, Mostly the term edema. Inflammation is correct. Because of inflammation, there is more edema. This edema is causing more pressure and injury to the local area. So when you give that steroid, which has anti-inflammatory property, it reduces that extra edema and eventually the inflammation. So the main term, what we like to use is edema here, actually. Okay. So extra pressure will put more pressure. And with time, you know, there's a possibility that more pressure will build up is another possibility. So when you give that one, a patient is secure actually. And tell patient about a steroid always, see single shot of a steroid or a five day treatment of a steroid does not have any problem to be honest. All right. So that's that one very important lesson I learned that day. All right. Few of the things about the spinal lesion. I mean, of course, in, in the exam, it is very, very important. In orthopedics, we'll also discuss those things. But um, L4, L5, S1. As I said, that doctor was examining L4, L5, and S1, and also the peroneal. So very important for the exam, L4, L5, S1, and peroneal. I'll share a special video with you guys later on after closing this group. Actually, I'll share a special video on nerve root. Actually, I have a very nice video, how to differentiate L4, L5, 
S1 and peroneal. Okay, mostly comes with orthopedic, but since it came so, I will share that one actually. I mean, if I start explaining now, I mean, it will be too much pressure on your mind and pressure on your mind actually, like L4, L5, S1. Nerve root people find it a little difficult all the time. So that video has very nice explanation on the nerve roots actually, especially these four are very major in the exam. No matter how much good a doctor is as a clinician, but you know, this nerve root, everyone get confused a little bit. All right, so no worries guys. Okay, so thing will be covered. Okay, but keep it in mind while you're studying, at least remember these points. For now, remember these points. In future, maybe after maybe after 10 days, we'll share that video with you after closing. Now, many, many people are attending trial classes today, right? Great. All right, so moving forward. Yes, this is the picture of spinal cord compression, as you can see. And you need painkiller. You need also steroid. All right. And you also need to look into that a neurosurgeon's opinion, whether surgery is recommended or not. If too much test prolapse, surgery recommended as well. All right. And among the uh, this particular thing is, you know, spinal lesion, as you all can see, a particular things are here. We'll go through these things more in the neurology section, definitely. Uh, but, you know, since it's given in the CISO, so you see, I put it as a refer to neurology. But let me give you a little idea. That's okay. Great. I hope you don't mind if I give you a little idea. Or you guys want a little break here? Uh, let me, I didn't ask you guys, actually. Or you guys want a little break here? All good? Or should I continue? Please let me know in the comment section, guys. All right. Okay, let's just have let's just have two minutes water break. And some people wants to check with their baby if the baby is fine or not. I'll give a break later, actually. Okay, so yeah, okay, let's three minutes break. They want to check with babies, yeah, kids, you know, out there. Some people wants to check on, you know, one one doctor say, Oh, I, I need to check on my husband, <laughs> you know. So that's also okay. Maybe you know, looking for food, not in another way. Yeah. So Anyways, guys, let's go for a three minutes. Break time, guys. See you after the break. Thank you so much.
All right, everyone, so we're back. Great. So let's see if you this um, related to spinal cord, even though it's more related to neuro, but it is okay to uh, discuss a little bit actually. Yeah, the things. All right. Uh, guys, you know, uh, the things you are sending, you know, I cannot follow. There is thousands of messages in the Zoom. Yeah, so there's no point of writing these things here. We'll get back to you one by one gradually. We need seven days time uh, for certain things. Yes, yeah. We know that, you know, you're interested and things like that. We'll check your admission. We'll check all these things. And process takes time, actually. Okay, so gradually because admission is in process. All right. So because, you know, officially the classes, you know, will start, um, you know, we'll give you the routine and the things. Usually there's admission process. So we need seven, 10 days time as well after the trial classes and things actually. So gradually we'll get back to one by one. So your patience and all these things are very important. Uh, please do not write, you know, your email in the Zoom option because I'll not be able to follow that one okay have patience do not do anything unusual we'll get back to you when the time will be required okay so do not do anything unusual make sure another thing um especially in unusual time you don't make calls is another thing you know let me tell you anything anyone in this world you know we don't make direct call actually especially in messenger unless asking i mean a person if not known actually yeah so some of you should also realize that actually you know like sometimes middle of night and the things you know some of you uh, call actually so please make sure you know you text first you know if you want to discuss something or things like that regarding admission or if you are in a major trouble and the things uh, please make sure you know you you drop a message when we give confirmation you're available you know we can Otherwise, you know, Friday, there are special times, you know, where you can also, we remain available, especially if you're looking for me. So officials are different. Me is a little different, actually, you know, so I'm one person. So you can understand these three, 4,000 students worldwide. Difficult to talk to many people. But I came by one by one in that case. Khaled also helped me, who is our general manager. Um, yeah, so he also helps in a lot of things. Great. Okay, guys. So before we start again, you know, is my audio and everything is clear? Just checking one time. Sound testing. One, two, three, four. Okay. Is it loud and clear? All good. Excellent. Okay. Loud and clear. Perfect. Okay, so let me take you to little drawing section. Yeah, will that be okay? I mean, little neurology, everyone hates neurology, right? Yeah. Now, let's just trying to draw a little spinal cord. Okay. I'll try to draw some track. Please do let me know which track is this. Okay. Here is a track. Guys, try to use a laptop because some of you are using mobile. Your kids are coming. They're also operating mobile. Make sure, you know, uh, very basic things. Uh, you alone in the room, if you have a kid, make sure, you know, a caregiver. You know, everything is about managing in life. Okay, so this is important. So because, you know, if your kid is with you, you know, you eventually cannot attend the classes properly, actually. So tell your husband in that case and to take care of these things your, your class is definitely important actually because there is no point of attending the class if if you have to take care uh, with your kid respectfully speaking yeah yeah because make sure you utilize it properly you, you sit on a chair like this you have a laptop not a mobile because you cannot see things properly in a mobile some cases now this is a track you know so what track do you think it is all right, well done. So this is, you know, lateral, you know, you know, spinothalamic tract. Next quick question. What kind of sensation it carries? What kind of sensation it carries? Can I say pain and temperature it carries? Pain and temperature it carries? Well done. Now, I make a mnemonic here. I hope, you know, we all have that bone in that body. I hope you do as well. <laughs> uh, pa, te, la. Now, abbreviation of this one, la means lateral spinothalamic tract, uh, pain and temperature. So lateral spinothalamic tract is carrying pain and temperature. Is that clear now? Yeah. 
And yeah, it's it's obvious to forget track. That's okay. All right. So that's a side track. That's a side track. So if you see any lesion or something in the side track, it means pain and temperature will be lost. I hope that is clear. This is the midlines. Yeah. Next, if you have something here. If you have something here. Is that a motor track? Is that a, you know, what are two types of tracks, right? So ascending tracks, descending tracks, motor tracks, sensory track. This one is a spinal cord. This is the, you know, anterior. This is posterior. Let me clarify that one. What is this track is about? This is anterior side, actually. Is this is a central. Is it like a... Yeah, someone said it pyramids, you know, so there's some pyramids there. So someone said pyramidal track. So is pyramidal tracks are motor track, sensory track? What do you think? What type of track? We are expecting some sort of motor track, corticospinal track, corticospinal track. Now then, where it is going? From cortex, corticospinal, corticospinal. Right? So can I say motor track, corticospinal track, motor track? Or motor track? Clear about that? I think I know many of you forgot that one. So cortex, cortico, spinal, corticostal track, and it carries motor actually. Yes, well done up to anterior horn cell of the spinal cord. Now, last but not the least. Yes. If I have a blue color track here, oh, what is this track is about? There are more tracks with motor sensories, but there are three major tracks. Okay, so now you tell about this track, my dear doctors. What is this track is about? This is in the posterior side. What is this track? Dorsal column. Dorsal column track. Also, I think track of gall and bird, you know, this kind of dorsal column track, we remember. Now, quick question. What kind of sensation dorsal column carry? All right, yeah, we know it's sensory. Good one. We know it's sensory. But tell me the exact findings. Crude touch. Crude touch. Proprioception. Two-point discrimination. Vibration. All right. All right, great. So I hope that is clear. So crude touch, crude touch, proprioception, vibration, two point discrimination. All right. So these particular things, you know, is carried by that dorsal column. So did you get a view now about the tracks, my dear? All right. And sensory track coming from the spinal cord and going to the brain. Is it clear as well? Sensory tracks coming through the spinal cord and growing through the brain. Now, one more thing, while coming from the spinal cord, they crosses, you know, mostly here, and then they go up. About sensory track, they crosses in the bottom side. All right, then they go up. These are for some of the um, sensory tracks actually. And about some of the motor tracks, about some of those um, motor tracks, you know, you know, this is also important to remember. Some of the motor tracks crosses in the pyramidal area, pyramidal area. All right. So with that point, let's come back to this particular section, this particular section. Yes. Let's start with this one, say anterior spinal artery occlusion. Now, how, which tracks do you think is going to affect here? I think except for that posterior track, except for the posterior track, both lateral and anterior tracks are affected. Are you sure about that? Except for the posterior, lateral and anterior are affected. Clear? So that is the reason bilateral pain temperature lost. Spastic paracelsis means motor is gone. Anterior spinal artery occlusion. Clear? I hope that is clear now. Next one, you'll find an interesting one. Some are in the motor area. 
some are in the sensory area. That is the thing. Now, you have to understand this, guys. You know, you cannot repeat so many things. That was easy thing. Yeah. Now, some in the motor area, some in the sensory area. We'll post that recording. Later, you can, those have too much deficiency. You can see it later. You can play me later. Yeah, in that way. Great. But that, that was an easy one, actually. Motor and sensory and motor and the lateral, both are affected in that side. Please draw the pictures. Try to explain to your friend. You will understand this. Uh, amyotropic lateral sclerosis. See, everything at my level, you may not understand. Those of you forgot. In that case, remember the key points and then work on it, actually, if you have forgot that one. Okay, that's my suggestion. Try to catch it because otherwise it will be difficult. I'm going at very slow speed. The speed will be more higher in future. Now, amyotropic lateral sclerosis. Have you ever heard about this term motor neuron disease? Motor neuron disease. All right. It's a mixed up of it's a mixed up of upper motor neuron lesion, lower motor neuron lesion. Right. So some parts involving motor, some part involving other parts. So different areas been involved. So upper motor neuron finding would be there. Lower motor neuron finding would be there. Example, one example of upper motor findings, say spastic paralysis. One finding from the lower motor, say fasciculation. If this both together is given in one particular question, we call it mixed variety. This is this mixed variety, you know, upper motor and lower motor together is called amyotropic lateral sclerosis. Guys, you don't have to focus on neurology. Forget about it. I'm just giving you a gross idea because in neurology, we'll again get into it. But it's an eye opener for some people who forget the neurology. Some of the things you have to also uh, it's a high time you check some YouTube videos and things and get clearance actually. Okay, because we don't get deep down to too basic because this MC exam level is quite high up. All right, so this is a good time before neurology. You can clear up these things if you have tremendously forget these things, but do not expect we'll get into too much neurology, neuroanatomy for you, which does not come in main exam actually. All right, I'm just giving you a gross idea right now. All right, next is a multiple sclerosis. Again, if you see demyelination in certain parts, okay, so this is about multiple sclerosis. I know some of you are not understanding, you know, but just get idea. This one is clear cut, isn't it? So if you see a case like dorsal column affected, any disease in your mind, any disease that affects only the dorsal column mostly or targeting the dorsal column mostly, Anything? The answer is a tertiary syphilis. So tertiary syphilis is something which targets the dorsal column. Is dorsal column affected? Which scenarios do you think will be affected? All the, you know, vibration, pressure, you know, two-point discrimination, crude touch, all those particular things would be affected in tertiary syphilis. Is it clear now, guys? So track is like a maths. If you just get it, you get it. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It is kind of like that. Uh, one more thing. By definition, what is the extension of upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron? From brain, you know, spinal cord anterior horn cell. That is the upper motor neuron. Now, quick question. Anterior horn cell of the spinal cord, is it a part of upper motor neuron or is it a part of lower motor neuron? Only new doctors will answer this one. Anterior horn cell of a spinal cord is a part of upper motor or lower motor neuron. Quick question, quick answer. It is part of lower motor neuron. Okay, This is a very common mistake done by many. Right? For so example, if there is a tumor in the anterior horn cell of the spinal cord, are you going to see upper motor neuron lesion or lower motor neuron lesion? Of course, you are going to see lower motor neuron lesion. All right, because anterior horn cell is a part of lower motor neuron. Is that conception is clearing, guys? I hope that is, yes. Don't worry, upper motor neuron, lower motor neuron, these things I will tell in more details. In the main exam, we're not teaching neurology. Some of the emergencies they enter, but few of these things are eye-opener that, you know, you must might need to work a little bit on the track. 
you can go to YouTube and type neurology tracts. You may find a lot of videos to clear your concepts. All right. Great. And if you see last but not the least, there is a one with polio. So polio, um, two anterior horn cell of the spinal cord is affected. So what do you think? Two anterior horn of the spinal cord is affected. It, is it belong to upper motor or lower motor then? That belongs to definitely lower motor. That belongs to lower motor because anterior horn cell of the spinal cord, part of lower motor. Interesting, right? Great. So, and here, all the features you can see in the right-hand column, like flaccid paralysis, less reflex, which is hyporeflex, hypo, 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 all hypo, fasciculation. Yeah, so all these things are related to polio, actually. Polio is the indicator of lower motor neural lesions. Is it clear? Is it clear? I hope it is, yes. Last but not the least, it is called cape-like distribution. It is uh, syringomyelia. It's like a syrinx. It's, it's like a uh, syrinx, actually. All right, so uh, for that one, let me take you to uh, this spinal cord part. You know, through this anterior horn cell, like, you know, uh, this some of the lateral spinothalamic tract that comes and crosses up. Another lateral spinothalamic tract comes through this part and crosses up. So the crossing thing is happening in the middle. Okay, so this is like a syrinx or... By name, it is called syringe is like a balloon or something. So it is called syringomyelia. So if there is a problem in the middle, do you think both lateral spinothalamic tract will be affected? Because the crossing point is in the middle. So both lateral spinothalamic tract will be affecting here. All right. Both lateral spinothalamic. So this is a crossing of both lateral spinothalamic tract in syringomyelia. Can I say in that way, bilateral pain and temperature will be lost if all agreed you know because lateral spinothalamic track lateral spinothalamic track yeah at that level well done good one let's not make it more complicated for others <laughs> at or below level yeah so yeah. so in that case yeah so in that case uh, both pain and temperature because why they are carrying sensation of you know lateral spinothalamic track Okay, so if, if middle part of the spinal cord is affected, which is a crossing point, which is a crossing point of both spinothalamic tract will be affected. Is it clear to dear doctors? Is it clear? All right. Yeah, I mean, note section, you know, we'll provide it later. As I said, we may need seven more days to get back to you guys because we are in the process of admission and all these things. So eventually everyone will get things. But initially you need to give me time. Have patience. Very, very important. Actually, make sure uh, <laughs> we don't get into trouble, actually. All right. So check your admission status. If you're not getting notes, we'll get back to you gradually. One by one. Don't worry. All right. In our notes section, uh, these particular things are given as surgery class three notes, actually. Okay. Surgery class three, which is a trauma. So that note is already there. So th if anyone, we have sent notes uh, before, in that case, you know, you can see that one. But guys, we're not getting into complex. So this is just a trial class, you know, because, you know, after trial class, we have admission processes and the things. Then we start the main classes. We'll come up with the routine and all this thing. Then we'll start. So we have a lot of time. Don't worry. Don't be panicked, first of all. I reassure you. <laughs> all right. Next is coming is a neck trauma. Uh, my voice is buffering. No, that's quite important, I think. Uh, is it okay, my voice? No, no, no. I think, you know, it's fine. Come on, guys. It's UK. It's UK. You know, it's impossible here. <laughs> yeah. In UK, it's uh, impossible. Yeah. All right. So, you know, you need to check your own internet speed. Yeah. So, guys, if you have problem, check your internet. Yeah, because in UK is the highest cross, like, you know, internet. Yeah, that's the thing. So it's very less likely I will have any problem from my side, actually. 
No, no, no. It's it's from your side. That's from your side, not from my side. Yes. Great. And you know, in our country, you know, the falsification about internet is, you know, oh, ma'am, I'm giving you the highest speed. You know, <laughs> this is the biggest joke in our countries. Like, you know, so that's the thing. Uh, yeah, like, you know, internet care provider, when you call, they'll say, no, 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 you know, we are giving you the highest speed always. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, about Australia, it's a decent speed, not the best speed. Depends on what line you are using. Some people use very cheap line in Australia. For them, better you upgrade a little bit. Yeah. And you know, another thing, you are attending the class, the other person in that room watching Netflix, which one do you think, you know, consuming more data? The Netflix uh, 4K is consuming more data or the Zoom is consuming more data? And, you know, another kids, you know, your, you know, kids father is busy with the kid because father don't want to put too much, you know, um, effort on the kid. They play that, you know, video for the kid. You know, and you know, he's doing some other thing. You can go and check that one as well, you know. So that is also might be a reason. Sometime, you know, you might have buffering, you know, in some cases. Yeah. So that is a possibility. The line you are using is any other person is also using that line, actually. So this is another thing. Because if someone plays Netflix, Netflix has 10804 K speed, and also it it will, you know, take away all the data from you actually. So just be careful. Please check by going if some other is also using movies and things like that actually, okay? Zoom normally consume very less data by the way. So usually not supposed to have problem unless someone plays videos. And yes, some cases in our country, you know, last time I went to Bangladesh, I went to take class. I have to stop the class at some point. Yeah, so it was happening because Previously, I was using a very powerful line because for a short time I went to Bangladesh. So with the regular line, I was in so much trouble, actually. Yeah, right. Let's go and you know uh, finish this one. Neck trauma, interesting. Some points come out. Yes, uh, neuro was a little tough. I understand, guys. We'll come to neuro again, actually. So don't be sad for neuro part. Neuro and cardio is always been a part of sadness of many doctors, actually. So that just required a lot of revision, actually. The problem happens because in our med school, the problem remains, actually. I'll try to clear a lot of things during neurology. Uh, yeah, so no worries. Talking about neck trauma, what are the neck trauma-related questions may come? Like, you might be given scenario in the emergency room. Patient is coming. Patient has a penetrating knife injury. So if you need penetrating knife injury, what is the consequence? Penetrating knife injury in the chest. So, of course, your lungs can be involved, actually. Pleura can be involved. So is there any possibility of pneumothorax? Air will be entering into the pleural cavity. I mean, yes, that is a possibility. So penetrating trauma leads to surgical expression in all cases if there is any expanding hematoma, deteriorating vitals. All right. So chances of pneumothorax is high. Recommended chest strain. Also, it might be recommended to for open surgery. So deep on one, the extension of the injury. So you need more radiological finding to see what has happened actually and also you know what is the extent of the injury great but please remember penetrating knife injury can lead to pneumothorax so you may need to give chest strain in that case blunt knife injury maybe other side of the knife or any blunt knife yeah so uh, blunt trauma possibility in the neck and all this thing can happen Spine injury can be possibility. Some spine injuries can be very dangerous, by the way. So you need radiology to see as well. Even though, even though uh, some injury may not be that extensive, bleeding is less. But because of the blunt knife, you never know. Some of the spine can be involved actually due to you know extension of the pressure. So yes, X-ray and these things. Maybe more advanced radiology is also required in in general. Not, not only just extra, some cases more advanced radiology will be also required actually. So best way is the CT scan is the best way to assess the status of cervical spine. Please take a note on this one. CT scan is the best way to assess the cervical spine. So you got your answer, doctor. I mean, yeah. So CT will be the best actually in that case actually because you know, see small, small structures out there. So extra may not cover those things. 
all right moving forward uh, chest trauma okay in the chest trauma often comes as a road traffic accident together often comes frial chest uh, sorry spelling mistake frial chest tension pneumothorax hemothorax sometimes clinical vaginities all are given together sometimes it is given uh, some patient came with a knife injury what to do so just go and take out the knife directly is it like that i mean in an emergency room a patient came with a you know penetrating knife so what he will do just remove that knife he may <laughs> no no it 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 might be blocking lot of vasculature when you remove the knife all the vasculature bleed out often all right so it can be very dangerous actually so always do that in operation theater under you know when the head surgeon will do those procedures actually okay removal of the knife under general anesthesia when surgeons and all team will be ready very dangerous matter okay in orthopedics we'll talk more about the frail chest let me give you just a short intro about frail chest after road traffic accident this thing happens ribs are broken into two pieces often that's frail chest you can be given you know radiology uh, to rule it out also clinically there is a way to differentiate frail chest that is we call paradoxical breathing paradoxical breathing very very important what is the first line of management in a frail chest case any cases what is the first line of management in a frail chest case answer often the answer is a pain killer well done right okay but if the patient is dying unstable then of course you know we will do intubation if patient is unstable hemodynamically then intubation otherwise we start with pain killer imagine your ribs are broken into two pieces how much painful it can be yes. one more thing you can be offered two things two things means in that way you can be offered often uh, one is a intubation and one is a cpap all right so which one you like to prefer for frail chest the answer the winner here is a cpap is the winner it gives a sustained thrush and all these things all right right and do remember one thing we don't do ct scan in frail chest unless the patient is stable this is another important thing we don't do ct scan or even in other patients too we don't do ct scan unless the patient is stable tension pneumothorax we learn hemothorax we learn in both cases you'll find reduced air entry this case you'll find percussion not hyper resonant in this case we find percussion not dull all good so you have come up across those things are we clear with the pneumothorax and hemothorax at least and frail chest i just give you little idea more we will clear your idea in the orthopedics is it clear to dear doctors so when you read i mean my um, suggestion is whenever you read pneumothorax read about hemothorax read a little bit about the frail chest as well because often they try to confuse you in between three options actually all good moving forward now coming to the abdomen after chest coming down to the abdomen lot of abdominal trauma lot of abdominal emergencies a very quick question a patient is brought to the hospital you suspect the patient has a bad injury what is the next thing you will do in the emergency room this is how the most question comes in the exam in the trauma room emergency room you thought maybe there is internal bleeding is going on i repeat there is internal bleeding is going on then what to do is it uh abc is okay but other than abc what do you think we'll do a first ultrasound okay there's two type of ultra one is ultrasound of the whole abdomen for that and you have to take to radiology department and one in the emergency room it is called first ultrasound just like a probe and quickly even doctors can also check it is there any fluid inside all right uh yes so we go with the first ultrasound in the trauma room in the trauma room in future i hope many of you will be trauma surgeons or many of you will be working in the emergency in australia 
we'll talk about those things in you know future uh, like example if you have more you know experience in the emergency field you know which particular emergency field um, will give you more higher chance of you know securing job i'll tell you a lot of tips in you know, we have five months so don't worry actually some people you know we understand a little enthusiastic on this matter in terms of you know you know but you know you have to pass the exam it's like a ladder one by one by one actually you know so throughout i will tell many things my youtube videos also has so many information so um time to time i'll tell you which video to see or in live classes i will also interact so do not worry coming back to this one now this is abdominal um but you know one video is very popular one is that basic video, you know, uh, AMC frequently asked question. I'm very sure most of you have seen that one and then uh, think about starting MC. Another one is very popular, which uh, if you want to know a little bit more advanced, what to do after MC one. I mean, those are more into futuristic thing. That video is available there. You can go and check that one by going to YouTube or you can just type in YouTube what to do after MC one and just put my name, Sherry or Ahmed. You'll find directly that video what to do after mc1 share here you know you'll find it immediately great abdominal trauma or emergency let's focus on this one uh and this one is a aaa what does it mean suddenly it feels like you know the movie rrr right you know <laughs> we also have a movie like that yes now what do you think what is this you know this aaa means yes Abdominal aortic aneurysm. Yes, but this is not a movie, but this is a real life, very dangerous situation. Now, two scenario, if it is ruptured, until proven otherwise, patient is gone. You know, I tell in that way. Abdominal, you know, aorta rupture, patient is gone until proven otherwise. Unless in the, already patient in the hospital, in a situation where you can do the surgery. But, you know, at home, if abdominal aorta ruptures very difficult to treat now quick question in which group abdominal aorta rupture is more common means some people where they have some connective tissue problem and vasculature problem so what do you think quick answer one is a marfan syndrome and ehlers danlos syndrome eds and marfan two things eds and marfan secondly very important or not second but this is number one actually 80 percent of the cases uncontrolled hypertension if you have uncontrolled hypertension there is chances of aneurysm very simple definition of aneurysm abdominal you know abnormal dilatation of the aorta i hope so you can relate now abnormal dilatation of the aorta that is called you know uh, aneurysm actually now rupture and rupture rupture we don't have any choice with just going for surgery. Now, unrupture case. Now, in unrupture case, there's a few things written about um, rupture, unrupture case. Unrupture case, you know, you can also do certain test, CT scan, ultrasound, and all this thing. So, uh, definitely, we need surgery, exploratory, rapidotomy surgery. Uh, internal bleeding, we do first ultrasound. These are important things. Okay, we'll come back to those part later. Abdominal aortic aneurysm, um, you know, we can also do as a screening, unruptured case. Unruptured case, we also do as a screening. All right. So uh, that unruptured case, we can keep checking with ultrasound. We can keep checking with some of the ultrasound. If the size is more than five, we refer it to vascular surgeon. I'll tell more about that in future in some surgery classes. But for now, remember, if the size is more than five, we refer it to, you know, a vascular surgeon. They will decide, you know, to do the surgery or not, actually, in unrupture cases. More than five is huge possibility of rupture. Okay, that's the thing. Talking about the unruptured cases. Unruptured cases, we directly go for the surgery also we'll talk about the male female you know uh, size also that is like some cases so what do you think any idea this is a question for the, if if anyone is a previous batch doctor do you have idea you know which one is considered in male and which size is considered in female all right so male of course uh, body wise male are a little bit more bigger than female so in that case for male 
it is considered 5.5 in case of female it is considered 5 is it is it like that yeah so 5 in case of female are more you know thinner so 5 in female 5.5 in male because male naturally a little bit more bigger than female actually clear about this good well done so any blunt trauma to the abdomen summary here exploratory laparotomy this is the line would be given in the exam some cases easy question does come to the exam any internal bleeding you know in a monitor and the probe would be there you go for fast ultrasound exactly very popular in the exam i'm telling you Sign of internal bleeding, losing blood pressure, cold, clammy skin, low CVP, rapid trade pulse. You already know these things. Diagnosis of abdominal bleeding can be made most accurately with CT scan. Most accurately. So please always check in the question what they are asking. This is a very common mistake by many doctors that what they're asking, you don't see just, oh, abdominal aortic. Yeah, so this is ultrasound. Please check first, you know, what they're asking. Are they asking about accurate diagnosis? Then it would be CT scan. If it's a initial, then of course it would be fast ultrasound. All right. More accident and related things. You will also find a few things in the John Murtak as well. You can have a look if you want. And there are books like Master the Board. You know, when I used to study, I used to keep, you know, uh, two different sources. Now do you do have notes and the thing, you know, when we were studying, we never have notes and the thing. You can imagine we had to study whole John Murtagh, find out even a lot of things are not given in John Murtagh. So find it out from other sources and the thing. So now it has become much, much easier actually. Yeah, but you know, it is also true. Exam has become also difficult compared to, I took my exam in 2016. Yeah, now it's 2023. Um, so over the years, I follow questions a lot. The question has become more harder with time, actually. So we also have solution for that. You need to practice more. You need to go through things more, actually. Yeah. Yeah, of course, I mean, uh, that's a tricky question. I mean, of course, I will tell classes definitely would be enough but you need to also study if you, if you think just come to class and you don't study later on yeah so you have to follow you have to come to live class first of all secondly you have to follow the class instructions okay so that's the thing yes and we are very up to date on this matter especially in terms of recall and a lot of those things you know i've been following very well actually and so far uh i mean with the grace of god 800 60 doctor passed actually so which is very big number actually right yeah so we hope like uh by this year we'll be having you know thousand only even mc passed if we add the plab doctors then we already closed thousand but only in mc i want to see that you know uh, thousand doctor passed from an academy or institution that will be very big milestone things actually yes all right so let's hope like you know good luck to all of you i hope by this year you know this uh, 860 you guys will take it to thousand okay so best of luck for that actually great all right so moving forward more things coming up so splenic rupture do you think it's an emergency what do you think guys splenic rupture do you think it's an emergency do you think it's an emergency of course it's a very big emergency and after any road traffic accident or some cases very large spleen because of any disease and leads to very large spleen and also can be ruptured some cases now what is your management any cases about the management what we do of course we do a surgery but what sort of surgery compare contrast a bit similarity with a hernia yeah a bit similarity with hernia repair so splenectomy splenography which one we do more often splenography or splenectomy most cases what we do is grade one to grade four what we do is raffi raffi no mostly we do raffi we don't remove spleen I mean, if it is a linear or a small or midline, we can repair it always actually. So it's pleno raffi. But if it is a grade five or smashed, it becomes like total, you know, mashed potato. Now we can, cannot do anything. So in that case, it's splenectomy. We'll remove it. 
All right, so few things to learn. Please take note for exam, what you need to learn. First of all, investigation. What investigation to do? I hope you are writing what investigation to do. So in that case, hemodynamically unstable, we go for first ultrasound. Hemodynamically stable, if stable, then you know, CT scan. We'll see very soon grading of the splinting rupture. CT scan will clearly give you the view of the extent of the injury, like say this part or that part or only in the sides or only linear or is it affecting the vessel? This is also important. Is it affecting the vessels or not? Right. So this is also very important. Treatment option is splenography, splenectomy. Now we'll see like few more things about rupture spleen. Uh, because other than road traffic accidents, certain situations can also lead to this thing happen. One more thing. Is it important? Like if you do remove the spleen, you need to vaccinate. If you're planning to remove the spleen in some diseases, some diseases you may need to like say thalassemia, too big, you know, spleen, you don't have choice. You, you have to remove it in any way. Do, do we need to give any vaccine before that? Answer against that big three, against that big three, what is that big three? Pneumococcus, hemophilus, meningococcus, the capsulated bacteria against that one, you need to give vaccine. Or you remove the spleen due to accident, road traffic accident, you give it also the vaccine. This is that grading we are talking about, guys. Very small linear capsular, grade one, subcapsular, grade two, then parenchymal, grade three, if vessel is also involved, that is great for grade five shattered or devastated spleen. Now, I'll bring you back to the my first picture. Can you tell me what grade is it? So some cases they will give you CT scan and ask you, what is this? Grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four. Correct answer is a. No, first of all, grade three is a terrible answer. Sorry, sorry, grade five is a terrible answer because I can see, see the spleen clearly. It is not smashed yet. All right, so <laughs> it is not grade five anyway. Grade five means you need to see a lot of uh, CT scans to see this is the spleen, this is liver and all this. I can see that spleen very clearly. That means it is not mashed actually, right? Now, is that affecting the vessel? Not very sure, probably not. So it is in between grade three and four. High likely it is grade three. So if you have answered grade three, probably you are correct. What is the management you are doing in grade three? Now, grade one to grade four, we give conservative. Now, conservative means splenography. Conservative means splenography. Grade five, let you see splenectomy. Repeat, grade five. Focus here, please. Grade five. Splenectomy. If patient is unstable, stabilize the patient first and then you consider splenography or splenectomy. Depends on the situation. I hope that is clear to all the dear doctors. Let's come back to that picture again. This picture is showing probably not involving blood vessel within grade three. So we'll go for splenectomy. Sorry, splenography in that case. We'll go for splenography, high likely in this case. Is it clear to dear doctors about a spleen rupture? One scenario you try to pick up and work on that particular scenario. You see from the Google more scenarios and you try to think, okay, this should be my management plan. Talk to yourself, talk to your partner. Don't just keep things in yourself actually, all right? So this is the thing. So uh, the classes and the things, the classes you need to attend, also the suggestions you need to follow, the practices I'm giving, which you also need to follow. If you're just, you know, uh, just following this one city, that's not going to pass. You need to see more, actually, my dear, actually, you know. So one suggestion uh, that any city scan, if it is there, you need to see probably eight, ten similar type of city scan to become a little bit more expert on that particular. So for example, today I'm showing you splenic rupture. You just go to the Google and um, then there's a Google image in that case. So there's a Google image. So in that Google image, uh, you need to see 10 more pictures, right? 
like similar type of pictures. Then you will get clear, oh, this is how a screen looks like. These are other type of things will be there actually, yes. All right. Good job, guys. So moving forward, more things to finish. All right. A burn patient as a pass part of plastic, I mean, plastic surgery is not really required. In burn patient, uh, just focus on what is first degree, second degree, third degree burn. This is one important thing. Yes. So uh, I usually start with a one quick question. If you have burn and if you're not feeling much pain, is it a more severe burn? Or is it a less severe burn? It is more severe burn, actually, because your nerve ending also has damage. Oh, sorry, I'm laughing, but that's very dangerous for some people. Right? So uh, very, very. I mean, if someone asks you, what is the most painful death? Right? I mean, there's many way people die. Right? Some people down some people you know so burn is considered some of the most you know um, painful you know death actually all right like house got fire or the building got fire yeah then they get roasted yeah gradually you know burn every nerve endings imagine how dangerous is that all right so guys suggestion here we don't know um what comes out uh, but we should have some uh, fire related protection in our house right you never know you know who might get unlucky with those processes and a small suggestion to all the dear doctors you all are like a family so you know there is a fireball you heard the name actually you know uh, i'm not sure if you have ever seen that one or not there is a thing called fireball. See, you know, the spray and the thing, many people even don't know how to even operate that one. And some people are scared, you know, who will go near to fire, you know, you know, if this thing happens. So, especially in your kitchen area, which is the most dangerous and vulnerable in most cases. Um, yeah, so those fireball, I mean, we buy a lot of things. We buy jackets, we buy shoes, many brands, uh, but that can be some cases life-saving actually, you know. So just have that one of the ball in your kitchen. You never know if anything bad happens. You know, it's automatically just uh, busted under pressure and, you know, uh, stop a lot of fire sources, all right? You know, most of the companies, they use it actually, but I feel, you know, because one case I know, it just happened. And even... Uh, uh, I used to be a teacher in China and I remember one time there was fire in my home as well. And uh, this thing I didn't tell many people, but you know, I, I, I was very lucky that I even didn't tell this thing to my parents actually. Yeah. Luckily I was outside actually. Yeah. So it just happened from a heater actually. Yeah. That is the thing. So if you are using also a heater like this, you know, like, you know, the extra heater, so that extra heater can be some cases very dangerous, you know, because uh, the regular heater and the extra heater is not the same. In our home country, we use those kind of heater. You know, you can see even the coil and the fire. So that is very dangerous source as well. But, you know, gas heater, that is very safe. Gas heaters, yeah. Anyways, coming back to this thing, first degree, second degree, third degree burn. And first degree burn you know, cause characteristics, second degree burn cause characteristics and um, just see it one time later from the notes. Yeah, so there is a uh, formula to calculate the fluid. Just remember it. If any question comes, you know, just use that formula. Some cases fluid calculation related things may come actually. Just remember it. You know, this is a formula called Parkland formula or you can YouTube it or Google it, what is Parkland formula, you get more information regarding it, actually. All right. Great. Next thing that is coming, we won't take much time of yours, actually. And last but not that thing, among a lot of emergencies, as you see this person, I mean, rather than snake bite, looks more like 
draggy person actually but in anyways a lot of people get drowsy after drug a lot of people get drowsy similar finding you know after this kind of thing so this is one of the things so this is related to you know snake bite right so this is the thing so in relation to the snake bite thing you know as you can remember uh, a very quick and vital question the very quick and vital question is will be to use uh, some kind of guys give me a second just as a moment let's take a two minute break guys just give me two minutes All right, guys, stay on the line. Don't use your cameras. Yeah. All right, guys. So thank you so much. Uh, there was a little short break. Yeah. So guys, you know what we're talking about that um, we'll talk about those in today is just a trial class. Guys, our main classes will start uh, after seven, 10 days. So this is a trial class for many of you, which we are going through. Um, as we mentioned, like, you know, we'll get back to you. Yeah. So that'll be fine. Great. All right. So uh, don't worry. And also the, those from previous best, please try to help, like, you know, with some of the answers in the comment section. If plus monitors are there, they can also help answering these particular things. If you since you know from the previous batch, actually. So there's a note section and all these things. Guys, you know, I'm not answering um, question answer right now. Let's finish the class first, actually. We'll get back to you and um, 
give us some time, seven, 10 days. It will take some time actually. All right, please have patience. It's so many doctors, so it's very difficult to control right now. All right, I know you are excited, but you just need to um, give us some time in that case. All right, so this is important. All right, moving forward. Great. Now, coming to that particular thing, this about, you know, snake bite, starting with the very first question about the snake bite. Do you need to give, you know, after a snake bite, do you need to give the anti-venom injection? What is your take on that? Do you need to give anti-venom injection, you know, for a snake bite case? The most cases, you know, it depends on envenomation. The right answer, it depends on envenomation. Depends on the snake is poisonous or not. All right. So this is a very, very important thing. So the snake bites has a lot of type of uh, toxins like cardiotoxin, neurotoxin, nephrotoxin. It can damage the vital organs. So uh, just need to be careful about this particular matters, like, you know, uh, which toxin and what kind of effect it has. But before that, the most important thing you need to learn, what are the sign of envenomation? All right. So these are some of the sign of envenomation, like, after a bite, not only is just the pain swelling, but there's a few other things like, say, bleeding points. They may have, you know, enormous amount of headaches. Like, you know, their vitals can be changed, like tachycardia or hypertension. It can be collapse and patient can be in shock. All right, so depends on the snake. And if the snake can be identified, depend on that one, antivenoms can be given. All right, so this is the important thing to be even cardiac arrest can happen. So you need to be uh, conscious about these matters. All right. Now about a snake bite among the first state things actually for envenomation, as you all can see, there is a part called immobilization. Immobilization, this is the one part. Then there's a pressure, this is another part actually. Now, lot of you know movies you have seen, I'm not sure you know how many of you have seen movie things. Like, you know, some people started to, you know, suck up those blood, actually. Right. So any idea about that one? Yeah. What, any, what, what's your take on that? Like, you know, so is that a, you know, is that a right way? You know, Nagin movie or any movies like, you know, so uh, people just, you know, trying to, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll try to share a clip, you know, <laughs> you know that, you know, snake bite management. But, you know, that is ideally not because your sublingual route is a very faster way of absorption. So if you do that, and if the snake turns out to be poisonous, in that case, you know, you are directly taking this, you know, poison in your mouth, to be honest. All right. So this is very, very, so it's a big no. So immobilization, pressure, local things, local hits, these are more important thing. These are more important things. All right. So learn the management of a snake bite. Learn the management of a snake bite. So immobilization, pressure, all these things. And consider for antivenom depends on envenomation. If there is sign of envenomation, only consider antivenom, you know, in that case. Clear that one? Yeah. But this is a small summary. You know, later you can check with the notes, guys. As I said, needs to have patience. Uh, try not to give too many inbox messages because we are already having a lot of trouble now, actually. So try avoid the messenger messages for, for now. Go with our WhatsApp for now, actually. It's, it's I know it's flooded, will be flooded soon, actually. But make sure you don't message now in our messenger for some time, at least not today. <laughs> Tomorrow would be better, guys. Try not to drop any message today, guys. Need some rest to... Because you will be also panicked why he's not answering. Because today, not possible. From tomorrow, we'll get back to you. Okay, no problem. Now, uh, focus on this one. Uh, it might look a little smaller. But when you see the notes later in future, it will be. So, few things. Observe in a critical area, actually. This is an important thing. Observe in a critical area. If it is a yes, then resuscitate. Antivenom immediately, sign of envenomation. Release the PBI after antivenom. All right, so these are the things. Also, a lot of other things that is involved, so you need to check that one. I think this question would be more clear when you see two or three questions related to snake bite. 
otherwise it is a bit difficult to understand all right now critical area means you know uh, it depends on actually uh, you know observing a critical area or life threatening envenoming actually so uh, features of life threatening envenoming conditions like nb1 so nb1 is given in the bottom i'm not sure you can see that one features of life threatening envenoming like cardiac respiratory failure of this situation if it is there in that case immediately you need to start re resuscitating give antivenom because all the signs are present now all right but if life threatening things are not present then just you know, take some blood sample, so about the bite side, you can do laboratory, you have more time in that case. So this is the differentiating point. This section has been taken from the therapeutic guidelines of Australia. So you can also search in that way. Let me tell you a trick. Uh, what you can do, snake bite Australia therapeutic guideline. You can just Google it and you'll find this chart. Or others, you'll find it in from our note. But as I said, sending notes and all this thing admission process it might take seven ten days actually some we already send notes but don't be hurry don't please rush us later you know you know process would be even more longer in that case all right so please start avoiding too many inbox messages from now on because if we get a little frustrated we start avoiding answering in that case actually all right so we'll get back to you gradually all this thing about the admission process follow that group follow our main group mc batch 48 we keep giving instruction to that inboxing is not the solution when we are dealing with a large amount of doctors all right we one of the last topic that is coming up that is caesar mostly it's a topic related to our pediatrics but you know it's also an emergency quick question about dealing caesar when you take a history is it a first time caesar or is that a recurrent seizure? Now, what investigation we like to do for a first time seizure? Guys, I need to keep my head cool and take the class, please. I mean, uh, no side question in the Zoom. I stop uh, checking the Zoom chat box for now. Okay, because end of the class, you are tired, I'm tired. So, you know, follow the group. All the instruction will come through the, you know, our group, MC Batch 48 group. So any next classes, next feature, next schedules and all these things, please do not inbox us. We will drop into the groups, actually. We'll update you tomorrow, all those things, actually. It will take at least 10 days to start our classes. All right. Now, first thing about a Caesar, first thing about a Caesar is we check either blood glucose level or electrolyte level, first timer. Okay, Caesar case. Guys, let's focus only on study. Let's not focus on your, your own problem. You don't get noted the thing because I'm getting distracted. If I get distracted, you will lose all the important information for me. Okay. So first time Caesar. Yeah. So first time Caesar, what investigation to do? Answer, is it blood sugar? Ding, wrong answer. The first time Caesar, we check is electrolyte. The sodium. See, me, you, we can also have Caesar. Doesn't mean it is epilepsy. Caesar, anyone can have. Is it it? So Caesar, anyone can have any time. Maybe you are too much hypoglycemic. Maybe I'm taking class. I may also have the amount of questions are coming. I may also have Caesar. You never know. So that will be a possibility of some electrolyte imbalance. Right? If it is a recurrent Caesar, if it is a recurrent Caesar, the answer is, you know, now your answer is blood sugar level. 
clear now guys so that is a little trick often many people miss that question all right because the electrolyte related thing can happen with anyone anytime but the recurrent you know uh, yeah is because recurrent means it has happened before it's high likely not related to electrolyte can be because of blood sugar level i hope that is clear okay so this is that thing also learn about uh, caesar and epilepsy drugs now about caesar and epilepsy drugs uh, let's talk a little bit about finish with the caesar thing which is our last topic i don't want to make it more complicated here's a nice classification of caesar you know partial and generalized all right among the partial simple and complex now how we differentiate you see this simple caesar conscious level is normal but in other caesar like complex impaired consciousness they really don't remember what happened generalized caesar again impaired consciousness they really don't remember what just has happened right so this is the very basic things partial generalized then in between partial simple and complex only we can see the simple caesar the conscious level remain intact impaired one impaired consciousness impaired consciousness all right some of the drugs according to the caesar type like partial valproic you know you can see it later not a problem like absence is erythroxymide tonic clonic valproic is okay so on things status epilepticus lorazepam uh i want to explain this thing you know in a very interesting way like you know you know always finish things with a something nice telling something nice you know even if you uh, meet someone and um then left uh, before lifting if you tell something nice it's good actually or tell something interesting it's good creates good impact now this particular one before going into that one let me introduce you some of the generalized caesar one tonic clonic caesar absence caesar myoclonic caesar atonic caesar tonic clonic you know it's like a too much you know whatever you see in movies in real life that's most are like the patient is shaking a lot that's the tonic clonic absence you know staring into the sky teacher is complaining why this kid just keep watching outside absence is a myoclonic right so myoclonic is comes from the muscle someone is eating corn flakes suddenly some corn flakes goes out all right so this is myoclonic from muscle some reflex and atonic caesar in fact a spasm you can skip here atonic no tone suddenly they fall down example some people are doing pt in the school you know the physical training suddenly one fall down without any reason and maybe this is happening quite a time sometime that is atonic caesar actually now coming back uh and febrile caesar febrile caesar 6 months to 6 year i mean all the caesars can be typical febrile caesar they don't have any significant impairment that is febrile caesar treatment is simple diazepam simple diazepam all right coming back to this one now the picture what do you think is the number one what do you think is the number one number one guys okay many answering tonic clonic then then what will be the four guys what will be the answer of four then see guys number four is a tonic clonic you know this is a part of tonicity part of clonicity you know tonic clonic you know, suddenly start shaking the whole body so that's the classic you know whole body start bending you know things that's the tonic clonic this one part the muscle is like kind of dancing all right so this is myoclonic this is technically myoclonic see number 2 yeah 
Number two, sitting and thinking, like, you know, looks like thinking, but teacher is complaining always, staring into the sky. I don't know what she thinks, you know, vacant look, and they can't remember what just happened. So this two is a absence scissor. Agreed with that one. Last but not the least, we can see this suddenly fall down, you know, coming through the stairs, sudden fall down. Now, some of you fall down also like this. I have a cousin. He used to have this problem. I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> too, maybe too fast and the things always used to fall down, actually. That is a different thing. But, you know, just fall down or, you know, like this without. But, you know, he balances always. You know, this person not balancing. You see how over the head falling down. Very dangerous. Or maybe a kid doing a school PT and suddenly fall down. So this is a case of what? This is a case of atonic. Suddenly, loss of A means absence. A, tonic. Absence, tone. Sudden fall down. Clear now, everyone? This generalized scissor. So let me take you back to this uh, generalized scissor, all generalized scissor will have impaired consciousness. Is that clear? All generalized scissor if having, yeah, these are the thing. For guys, one more thing. I usually tell the things which is necessary for the exam. For example, someone asks, what is the management of atonic? It never tested in MC. So usually I don't tell those things actually. All right. So because otherwise your syllabus would be too long. Normally for any type of Caesar, a basic concept, let me tell you that, you know, mostly, you know, we go with the drugs. For atonic, we also some special advices comes because of falling down. So someone has to be always there and other than some drugs would be there. But that is never tested that drug thing about atonic in the exam. So hence, some of the things we don't tell here actually, all right? But you can always Google it that, you know, atonic scissor management for extra learning and the things actually. But use my words as main in MC preparation, all right? I mean, very experienced for seven years. So use all the words, count all the words as very important, all right? So try to follow those particular words I say and those practices I gave actually. Example for... CT scans I gave and suggest you to watch, you know, approximately 10 different CT scans, right, from Google image. We'll talk about more about resources of CT scan. We have uh, radiology that will be, we'll do in future. All right. And some cases, one last term, you will see temporal lobe epilepsy. Some of the complex seizure will be related to temporal lobe epilepsy. Ro lobe related thing, again, is a part of our neurology. We'll talk more about function of different lobe, frontal lobe, uh, parietal lobe, temporal lobe, all these things. But you know, uh, temporal lobe epilepsy or temporal lobe has complexity and this particular finding can be there. All right, so I hope my dear doctors, I hope uh, that uh, take a future to cover up including calls and all these things. And yep, that's all today. And I hope you enjoyed the session. This is a trial class. Guys, this is not our regular class. This is a trial class today. All right. So our admission and the things, everything will open up. A few of you have taken admission. A few of things will be starting the processing of admission. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, from tomorrow, you can get back to us, not today. From tomorrow, guys, you get back to us. That will be kind and good. Yeah, so today will be really difficult. I need a fluid because I, I was also preparing slides and all these things. But I hope so you enjoyed uh, how we normally take classes. Say, example, in every week, high likely our classes will start after 10, 11 days. And how we take classes normally is... You know, we drop something, say, which is like a overview. Okay, overview means you'll get to know what are the topics we're going to cover. All right, that we called overview. That's not a live class. That one usually we drop on the Fridays. All right, again, I said the same thing, guys, follow instruction. 
you will we'll get you know tomorrow for the next one either it can be 10 or either it can be 15 we'll get back to you depends on our admission status and all these things all right yes next class update you will find in group you know probably in one two days actually it depends on admission status and all this thing because it's just a trial class today not that our main you know source hope you enjoyed so i mean uh, thank you for attending the